Say that grown-up men are still just little boys That really the only difference is the price of our toys We go for macho symbols like guns and running shoes Pick up trucks, hunting ducks, and <clears throat> power tools, power tools and Denny says to me, when we when we fire our opening, we turn our mics off. Denny looks over at me and goes, "What parade? Like fried chicken the National parade. Chicken oh, Fried Chicken on. Parade. You, you got me, there's man. gotta be one, right? Yeah. I would hope so, but there's just not. <laughs> there's just not. This town is so lame. Well, I, I still think about why don't we have a fourth? I'd love to have a Fourth of July parade. They are all local. I mean, there's a local uh, over at Liberty Ridge today, off of 156th Street or 151st Liberty Street. Ridge. There's a there's that? a neighborhood uh, Fourth of July celebration. All the kids on their bikes and they've mm. decorated their bikes. We did that and, when we were kids. Yeah. Our, our street. Our neighbors still do. Our neighborhood still does it. I and love it. And Led I told you last Cumberland week Police. about the so, Piogi parade down in Piogi and Johnson County. Well, and Carmel obviously probably has the largest parade. In they the did, area, is they that right? did it in the rain, and they did it well. Carmel I got to give them credit. Carmel Fest, and so did in Fishers. Spark is really oh, is that good? Huge, yeah, and really, and everybody loves it. Everybody really loves that one too. I should remember go to all that. the uh, the, con- the what was it? It would be contra- Was it be controversy when for the Carmel Parade? People putting out their chairs. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, has that minutes, stopped? Like a couple days before. Oh, not a couple days. Four or five days. Yeah, but They're you know crazy. What? I, don't, Someone, but I don't know uh, if that still happens. but It does. And you know what? Beth had a good... She was listening to... They were interviewing someone, and someone said, you know, we're having fun. This is how we do it. Everyone gets a place, and it's just like, pretty much like, leave us alone. And I get that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but I think it was the people that were like that ha- that yeah. they're in front of their homes. And people well, I get, like, I get that. You know, you got your chairs out there a weekend, and, and, I and they will, just leave them and there. This is my house. And I will say to, I can get irritated with people who put out towels on the chase lounges at the hotel pool. Oh, that happened. they come down oh, early. That's right. Like it's always dad. Dad is sent down. I forgot He's about got that. six towels and lays one on <laughs> on six chase. You know, and they won't be there for another five hours. I don't think oh, they have man. those at the Red Roof Inn, Pat. I guess not. Where are you guys staying if you don't see that? <laughs> we that's at our Western. That's at our condo pool, yeah. and they even have signs up: no, no saving chairs. <laughs> really, people do it anyways. Oh my. That's a big. That's big. So how was the Fourth of July? The big problems, and oh, here we go. It's a huge you know, problem. It's huge. I bet we could light light up the lines with talking about towels on Chase lounges. So, oh my gosh. Hey, you know what? Uh, before we continue, I think we should talk to Fulton. Fulton is he on the phone? Yes, he is. Okay, great. Because Fulton, uh, he Fulton calls every week and talks about his adventures in high school and and. Uh, his Olympics and different things, but uh, Fulton had a little accident this week. Fulton? Hey, good morning. Well, you sound good. Yep, I sound better. <laughs> what, tell everybody what happened to you this week. What happened on Monday morning, I got hit by a call. Mm. Um, the guy named, I don't know what his name was. Don't name but, him. Um, he ran into my bike and then... Um, I fell off my bike and landed on the ground. So now I got a sprint um, cast on my right wrist. So it's a sprain. So. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Is your ankle okay? Yeah, my ankle's all right. It's just a little bruised. Oh man, so are that's they gonna scary. Get you, are they going to get you a new bike since they destroyed your first bike? I'm not sure if they're going to or not. So, uh, you know, you're going to be there's going to be people calling you Keller and Keller, you uh, know, Morgan and Morgan, Morgan and Morgan and Isaac and Isaac. You know, I think I've been sued by all those people that you just mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fulton, did uh, did did an ambulance have to come? No. Uh, no. One of the guys took me home, and we're we're still figuring out who had it. So. Wow. And I was just trying to find oh out. And did the driver stay, Fulton, or did the did the driver bolt? Um, he stayed, and then he good. seen how I was doing. So well, good. You know, those accidents can happen. 
they can happen. They happen too often. Yeah, they do. People aren't paying attention. And so uh, for how will this how will this affect you as you move forward with all your yeah. your athletics and your and your karaoke and your ukulele playing? How is this going to affect you? It it will continue going on. The show will go on. I will get this. <laughs> okay. To go. Okay. The show, show will go, go on. It's got to. Fulton. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, Fulton, are you going to go to the big parade there? Uh, you know, the fried chicken parade today? I didn't know there was a fried chicken parade today. Well, there's not, Fulton, but there should be, don't you think? There should be, yep. You know, JMV <laughs> always wants to get in on the next big food festival, and I don't know, I don't see why we wouldn't have a fried chicken uh, festival. You know, we have fried chickens in uh, Sitzvo today um, during the 25th anniversary uh, for uh, Cicero, for the uh, Cicero's uh, 25th anniversary. Oh, okay, great. Uh, it's going tomorrow, all day and all tomorrow. Um, and where's that at? Um, is, is, where's it located? It is at the Cicero Community Park. Okay. And uh, we just had Dan's Fish Fry um, yesterday. That's a big deal, um, Hamilton County, Pat. Sure. You may not know what Dan's is, yep. but it's a big deal. Yeah. Well, uh, Fulton, you could go over to my hardware store in Cicero and check in on everybody, make sure everybody's doing their work, if you could do that for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. And uh, tomorrow's a big day, so. Well, tomorrow's happy, the big happy day. birthday, Cicero. Big day? Is that when he's singing? Is that, is that your ukulele day? Yep, it is. Oh, man. All right. Okay. It, but you're okay to play. 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 Yep. You guys ready for me to perform? Oh, are you ready right oh, now? Give us a little tease, I'm a little ready. okay, a little oh. taste. Let's do. Let's hear a little <clears> taste <throat> of, of what's. Ladies be. and gentlemen, mm-hmm. boys and girls from Cicero, Indiana, Fulton. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. He didn't. He could because he he was saying right, he wouldn't right. be able to so hear still, us. I bet you brought him up right now. He's still going. Oh, let's see. Can we bring him up? Yeah. yeah. It's a long song. It is a long song. We'll check with him after the news. Okay. Fulton. No, he's still on. He's still going. 
He's got that minor chord down perfectly on a ukulele. A minor really chord, good, yeah, he though. did good. Great. good for him. He has way more talent than I do. That's uh, not saying. I think he's still uh, going. Right. I bet he's still going. No, you we'll talk to him. Hold minute. on. Yeah, he's still going. Yeah. <laughs> a long song. Bless Bolton. his heart. <laughs> no. It's okay. you got to get to the commercial. It's all right. Come on, Pat. Okay. He'll be still we'll playing when we get back. Okay. All right. We're coming right back with more 93 WYBC. I like the first version. Yeah. Just really tighten it up. Yeah. Sounds just hey, good like morning. Welcome. My name is Pat. This is my friend Terry. Hi. Hey, Terry Lynn. <laughs> There's a strange man named Denny here. Uh, you're gonna, Hi, Denny. Wait till you, speaking of names, Pat, I've, I've got you for the In the Weeds segment today. Okay, great. I've absolutely got you. Jimmy is behind the board. and Hi, Pat. Hi, Jimmy. And Fulton, we want to say nice job to you. Wow. Oh, thank you so much, you guys. That means so much to me. You did a great job, and we're we're very glad that you're our friend. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, JMV is going to be coming to the big show tomorrow. Oh, great. Okay, well, good luck to you, all right? I'm not going to say sure break will. a leg because I you almost <laughs> did. I don't want to break a leg. That's, a, that's what I want. don't want, but. <laughs> there you go, man. You take care, okay? Yep, I sure will. All Thank right. you, guys. See you later. You know Fulton, that, somebody hit him on uh, on his bike. So if you didn't hear, he's got he's he's okay. Do you know he's what the rumor? Splint. Do you know what the, the folklore is about break a leg? Do you know what that means? He's already there. It means that you made the cast. Get it? Break a leg with a cast. Uh, you made the cast. Uh, makes sense. <laughs> Okay. That's pretty lame. <laughs> I'm, that's that's what I was I told was in high lame. school. Well, come on. Let's come up with something better. That's Jimmy. Look up. Break a leg. Oh, he's what, calling. What's gotta, the etymology? There's got to be other meanings. Something All way right. better than that. I'm just going with that. Gretchen joins us on the program. Hi, Gretchen. Hey. Good morning. How are you guys doing? And gal. We're doing great. great. How about yourself? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, I have two questions for you this morning, and they both be. Uh, are about my kitchen, um, specifically my kitchen sink. So one is short and one is long. So let me go with the short one. And that is my kitchen sink is probably a polymer or heavy plastic material with a white um, finish on it. And it's probably about 25 years old. So it has seen some life. And I'd like to bring it back to life. Is there a finishing um, kit or something that I can do for it that isn't about a third of the cost of replacing it? Well, it's an either or, Gretchen. <laughs> there are kits for it, and it's sort of like a, an acrylic repair yeah, or fiberglass luster, repair. Yeah, some luster, I remember, some yeah. purple can. That's exactly right. But, you know, you, you you get what you pay for with that, Gretchen. We used to have, you know, damaged tubs and damaged sinks, and we could revitalize them and, and sell them as at a discount. But it really was almost cost prohibitive, even back in the 70s and 80s. So uh, talk what about, about the what purple about the, uh, What about having the guy that does the tubs? Yeah, can that, you do a sink? That's who. That's who does it. You know, they do acrylic or fiber. Because that would repair. be a, a nice in between, right? They, than than putting a new sink in. The, the tough part is, is they use an airbrush to do the painting, and of course that sort of stinks up wherever it is. But, but and Rich, what do you think the cost is of something like that? To have well, a, ba- like a bathtub is re- about. Four hundred bucks. Yeah, and I'd say Burbage. about half for half that for a sink. I'm going to say more because you know you got uh, the trip charge is the same. I'm going to say two ninety. Neither $290. one of us know, Gretchen. We're just yeah. guessing. What's That's What's okay. the second question? I hope it's better. Well, that was the easy yeah. one. Ah. <laughs> that was the easy one. Um, my second question is a bit longer, uh, but I didn't realize. I did know my kitchen faucet was leaking, but I thought I had gotten all the water. Well, unfortunately, and I don't know how long this has been going on, um, it it leaked behind the sink. Um, It leaked behind the it leaked behind where the sink is and the uh, backsplash. So it went down the back of my under cabinet onto the floor, and I didn't know it because I have cleaning stuff under there, so I didn't see it. So now. 
Um, I'm concerned that I might have mold. I'm afraid to pull up. There's like a plastic covering adhesive thingy, vinyl. Um, I'm kind of afraid to pull up. And the floor looks like it's a little warped. And who would do? Who would check this? Who would repair it? My shayless. I need a new My shayless is really, yeah, that, that's their work. And they will have a dryer if it's still moist back there. But you're going to have to figure out if it's back there or not. So they have these little boroscopes where they'll be able to pull back just a little bit and stick a boroscope up there, which is like a, a flexible light with, with a magnifier. Check your prostate with? No, sort of that. Kind of like a colonoscopy. But it's like a colonoscopy for the behind your sink, Gretchen. But they can they can look back there and see what's going on. But I would say, Michelle's 844-FIX-ND, that's, that's their typical job. And if you weren't concerned, uh, if you're concerned, have Michelle's come out. But for a lot of people, you just clear the stuff out. Dry Wear it. a mask, pull it out. Remember, the uh, mold and mildew needs moisture to survive. So if you've mm-hmm. taken care of that problem and it's dry, it just needs a good cleaning. You know, you'd spray a little uh, bleach mix in there and uh, half and half, and it mm-hmm. would probably be fine. Well, my hope is that I'm going to pull up the vinyl plastic sticky stuff. I don't know who put it there. I, I've second. This is someone else lived here before me, but um, I'm going to look and see if there's mold. And my hope is that I can clean it up and I can um, put down kills and um, see if that won't take care yeah, of it. But I'm, oh. just con- I'm concerned that, you know, maybe it's gone somewhere else. I don't know. This is oh. against an outside wall. All right. So is there a basement or a crawl space below it? Neither one. Neither I'm one. On so I'm on a slab. Well, I, I, I'm not. I'm not concerned, because again, you fixed the. The, the water's no longer going back there. Correct. Correct. So now we, we know that we've now. we've taken away the food source. Yes. So, I say okay. you're going to be fine. Okay. So and I expect okay. your life expectancy will be probably greater than average. Have your Bible on the kitchen table, your crucifix in your hand, and peel back that vinyl. Go, Go for it. it. <laughs> Don't you forgot the garlic. The garlic. Uh, garlic. Uh, That's right. The garlic necklace. That's yeah. right. Yes. All yes. right. Well, okay. good, good luck. Uh, yeah, good luck to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Mm-hmm. That uh, stuff, the revital, it's, it's luster something. Luster. Blue luster. I don't know. You put luster it over um, to bring back kind of a fiberglass type of finish jimmy should have that by now but he hasn't even tried to look it up so i don't actually know. i did look it up the what the break of light oh, means the, yeah uh this is according to transcendencetheater.org if theaters were or if actors were not performing they had to stay behind the leg line which also meant they wouldn't get paid if you were to tell an actor to break a leg you were wishing them the opportunity to perform and get paid the sentiment remains the same to the day uh the term means good luck give a good performance well, there you go. That's way okay. better than your stupid thing. Well, I just what I was told I mean, when I was in high sense. school. <laughs> that makes way more sense. I mean, both both make sense. No, that Hold other on. one is. I'm getting a I'm getting an unknown call from Saudi Arabia. Who might that be? Saudi Arabia. Someone needs Don't money. Don't you get these weird calls? Someone needs money. <laughs> Some prince needs money. Uh, somebody's selling a camel. One of your fa- <laughs> one of, okay. One of your good friends has been kidnapped. Oh, and Lord. just needs some ransom That's money. Right. Oh, so there you go. All right, 239-9393 is our number. Hey, Sat- now we, we've got In the Weeds coming. Oh. We've got a big In the Weeds, Pat. Okay, In the Weeds is coming up next. Our number, 239-9393. Saturday's Home and Garden Program brought you in part by the Michelis Corporation. Water storms, fire, and wet basements. Life happens. Michelis happens to help you through it. I thought this was the In the Weeds segment. I don't know. The only one laughing in this segment right now is Landon. I thought, I didn't know if we were doing it this segment or not. Yeah. I never heard it. I never got a definitive That's all right. answer. We didn't, we didn't get a confirmation. Yeah. Allison's not here today. Yeah. She's usually our confirmation. That's right. So all what, right. So what we did to do the show, uh, Terry and I have found... <laughs> The script to the Hammer and Nigel show. We, I don't so, know what day this is. This must be Fridays. Obviously. We're just going to do this show. I think that would make I the like most it too. sense. Wait a minute. I'm over here all ready to do Home and Gardens. You know, in the weed segment. 
Yeah, but it's kind of fun looking through their Remember script. when George got his panties twisted when Nikki Haley said she didn't <laughs> think Joe would finish his term? And... It was always at my Biden turn. had a meeting with a handful of state governors, and he said he needs more sleep and uh, no more events after 8 p.m. What? It's Wheel of Fortune lights out for you, pal. No, President Biden no says he had he's a, a me- president. Not, no events after eight o'clock. President Biden said he had a medical checkup and is fine after last week's debate debacle. Okay. What do you have, Hammer? That was uh, no. I was just thinking last night. I don't know if you're following <laughs> on Twitter. It lit up. Because it said, just it took one person to say that uh, President Biden had a medical emergency on Air Force One. Oh, Lord. And and it, this was a, a far-right extremist, that a woman that a lot of people follow. And she posts, she po- she, you can just post that. <laughs> and it wasn't true. Isn't that but thing it about went, free speech? It went, yeah. it went crazy. It's power David Twitter. came running in and he said, you know, it's been reported. And Danny, you can't yell fire in a movie theater. I didn't yell a fire in a the movie theater. Well, you can't say somebody had a medical emergency. Uh, that's, what, that's what I think. But in this day and age, you can. And yeah. you're somebody that millions of people I follow. I don't believe anybody or anything and anymore. You just can't. So, okay, quick side story. Pat said movie theater. Last week, I went and watched the new Quiet Place day one movie. And if no one knows what the Quiet Place is, it's about all these aliens that come down to Earth. And they're blind, but they kill anything that makes sound. And it takes place oh. in New York, right? So, I mean, you just got to stay quiet, right? I'm watching the movie in the theater, and I completely forgot about the storms going on. Very stressful part of the movie. Power goes out in the middle of the movie. No. You know how terrifying that is? Yeah. And I'm thinking, like, oh, my God, I'm going to step out here, and there's going to be these aliens walking around just <laughs> slaughtering people every corner. And you had that to be these, quiet. Wow. Yeah, and it was like, it was the scariest thing I've wow. ever experienced what in a movie great, theater. I love the, I love the idea of the movie. It, was it I, good? Oh yeah, it's it's really what, good. Okay. People getting yeah. killed if they make noise? I love scary movies and this one oh, is in, in monster the, so movies, this was like, movies. So there, that's like technically Life's the third one. Life's too short for scary movies. Yeah. It's kids. technically the third one. There's like two or other ones. Nope. And the guy... I think it's Jim from The Office. John Krasinski wrote and made the first two. Doesn't Mo- Pixar movies? have wow. a new movie out? I was going to say, movies have to have happy endings. <laughs> Doesn't I Pixar? Love crap too. On, I Pixar has something out, don't they? Right Inside now? Out too. All right, yeah. are we ready for In the Weeds? Yeah, Danny's yeah, chomping you have at that, the bit. Uh, Danny, go ahead. Oh, boy. I know you're anxious. He's been talking about this since he could Well, you. I did these searches, at the end. I'm going to do a warm-up. Up Quiet here. while I do the intro, will you? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls... The unsponsored segment that is sweeping the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, Denny Smith, it is in the weeds. All right, so we have a quick warm-up. Okay, these are just quick, quick, quick questions and answers. What was the first snack advertised on TV? Cheetos. No. Uh, I would say, what What qualifies as a snack? A snack. I mean, is it a sweet? Is it Ding a dong. Sweet? Just is ding dong. Che- okay. <laughs> Pretzels. Landed- it was Lay's Potato Chips, 1960. I was close. Okay. How many of the contiguous states, the, the 48, lower 48, okay. border an ocean or the Gulf of Mexico? Oh. 23. Pretty I close, Pat. Pat, you're good, high Pat. by just a little bit. I would say 21. 21 is correct. Here yes. Wait a minute. Stacey. Are we 21. playing? I said 21. We, I said 21. Are we playing tw- Price is Right rules here? <laughs> well, I, I got it right well, on the well, head. You were I over. Right on the head. All right, so there is only one instance ever recorded of triplets in this animal. What is the animal? Um, Polar bear. Goldfish. Oh, that's a good guess. Um, I'm going to say... Goldfish have... Polar bear. Is it a giraffe? Pat, you're not too far. It's the elephant. An elephant has never had... I always with elephant. I know. Hmm. All right, so which is more contagious, Ebola or measles? Oh. Measles. Oh, I would say Ebola. Ebola. It's Pat is right. I don't like it when Pat's right all the time. Oh. By nine times, measles. measles is nine times more contagious. And there's still people that won't let their I know. kids get and the measles see, shot and the, vaccine. The reason I knew that is because uh, they don't make you get an Ebola shot when you're young. All right. So now this next one is about <laughs> bands. I think it's, it's okay. In this country. Uh, Which, uh, what, what is really remarkable about these seven bands? Okay. okay. They have okay. this one thing in common. Okay. All right. Tina Turner. Tina Turner. Yep. Julio Iglesias. Okay. Yep. Donna Summer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Alice Cooper. Mm-hmm. Van Halen. Talking Heads and Pink Floyd. What do they all have in common? They, uh, can, they wear wigs. Great hair. They can burn the house down. They were all banned bands in the USSR in the 1980s. Isn't that funny? I'm sorry. They oh, were well. banned. They couldn't perform in the United oh, they the were, USSR. They were unable. Okay. Yeah. They were banned. Kind of interesting. All right. Now, these oh. are... 
I want you to Let's tell see. me what these are, okay? okay. Now, th- this is a genre thing, okay? okay. These names, you got to tell me what these are. Wooly Booger, Swedish Pimple, Bunny Lynch, Disco Midge. What are those four things? Uh, those are uppers. <laughs> Wooly Booger, Swedish Pimple, Bunny Leech, and Disco speed, Midge. Or d'oeuvres. Those are all flies for fly fishing. Oh, Isn't that funny? Oh, if you make it, you get to name it. And they're, they're crazy names. Orange Death, Mrs. Simpson, Booby Nymph, Parachute Hopper. They've got all these really weird names. Huh. Love it. All right, so the last uh, genre is books, ladies okay. and gentlemen. Okay, oh, this is where I'm going to shine. This is where you're going to shine. <laughs> True or false, Patrick Sullivan wrote a book called Don't Tell Nobody But God. I believe that's true. True. That is true. True or false, Denny Smith wrote a book called Emotional Intelligence 101, How to Carve a Duck. Uh, I believe that is probably true. It just true. hasn't been published. <laughs> I'll say, I'm going to go the other way, say false. Uh, that one is true. Okay, one last one. The Legend of Denny by Dennis Smith. Is that a real book? The Legend of Denny. Is this another book you wrote? I uh, want it to be real. I don't think that one's real. I don't either. That's the one you're working it's on It's true. Now. I did all these. Okay, so that Wait. got me to this Well, joke. how come Wait, we never heard those of your books? these books? No, I didn't write those oh. books, but there's other Dennis Smiths. I did say oh. that I could only find one Terry Stacy, and Terry said there is another there's one. There's another one. She's a, a registered nurse at St. Vincent Hospital. Okay. Spelled now, exactly the same. I'm gonna we should hustle. have her on the show. I'm going to hustle call up me on these now, things. Terry Stacy. Now, these are true or false. Are these real books or not? How to Raise Your IQ by Eating Gifted Children by Lewis Frumkes. By eating children? By eating gifted children. How by to Raise Your IQ. Children. No, that's not true. Unfortunately, I would hope not. Unfortunately, that's true. I, I obviously have been on a steady diet of dumb kids. <laughs> <laughs> How to Become a Schizophrenic by John Modro. Is that a true, is that a good one? I would say that's probably. Mm, I'm uh, going to say true. Yeah, true. Uh, that's false. I oh. mean, it is true. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So, uh, ducks, how to make them pay. By William Cook. That's not. That's probably not true. It's true. These are all books that are written. How about this one? Knitting with Dog Hair by Kendall Crolius. That's you said true. Sure. So they're true. As that's weird true. as people are, that's for, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> this <laughs> fancy coffins to make yourself by Dale L. Power. Gosh, these are true. Oh my goodness. Uh, knitting with fancy dog hair. coffins. Right. Uh, here's the best one. I saw Beginner's this, Guide oh, to okay. Sex in the Afterlife by David Stom. Oh, you said they were all true. They're true. These are <laughs> books. I'm, I'm beside myself thinking, did people... How, oh, here's Pat. Here's one for you. Drink as much as you want and live longer by Frederick Byerlein. I think Frederick and you could be best friends. Drink as much as you want and live longer. Yeah. His stage name was Otis. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all oh, I have thanks. for uh, In the Weeds today. Yay! Wow. That was a good one. Oh, hey, one last one for you, Pat. Yep. How many nations have nukes? Um, let's see. That would be uh, um, uh, 11. Terry Lynn? I would say that there are um, six. Probably go about eight. It's technically nine, but we think that Iran has one. So there's 10, really. There's it nine. was in my brain they had one. Yeah, so Terry Lynn, you were close. Pat, you were close. Mm. Yeah. We were all around it. That's it, boys and girls. <laughs> Remember, Emotional Intelligence 101, How to Carve a Duck by Dennis Ladies Smith. and gentlemen, in the weeds, an unsponsored segment here on For WYBC. <laughs> That's all we have. That was a break. Is that it? Yeah. All right, we we'll go to break Are we taking a break? Yeah. No. Yeah, is it, oh, it is time for a yeah, break. Yeah, we should probably it? break. All right, we're coming right back with more. Our number, 239-9393. Hey, good morning. Welcome. You're listening to Saturday's Home and Garden Program, brought to you in part by the Michelis Corporation. Water, storms, fire, and wet basements. Life happens. Michelis happens to help you through it. Uh, if you're new to the program um, and you We're listen sorry. to the first show or the first hour, <laughs> it gets way better. <laughs> we were just warming up. We were just warming up. Hey, uh, did you happen to see... Um, 
Joey Chestnut down on the uh, Air Force Base? Just part uh, of it. No, but. I did not. So Wait. Okay. So so he didn't do Nathan's. Right, we watched that. But they had a, I don't know if you saw that, but they did a really nice tribute to him. Yeah, because I think they really, I think now probably they, they know realized they that up. they screwed up. They screwed up. But I wondered because it made it, you knew that Joey's always going to win. Yes. So it did make it a little interesting because you didn't know who was going to win. Right. And that was kind of, I think, exciting for the participants. It was 58 hot dogs. Is yeah. That I see that okay. right. And so Joey was down at an Air Force base and was, uh, for a charity, matter of fact, raised $106,000. Oh, amazing. And he was going against, I think it was an Air Force base. I think he was going Probably against Archie. four airmen. Oh, so yeah. it was Joey... Versus four airmen, all the hot dogs they could eat versus what Joey could eat. Okay. But instead of 10 minutes, just five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Joey, in five minutes, ate 57 hot dogs. In 10 minutes, at Nathan's, they only, the winner got ate 58. Yeah, in five minutes. And, and I believe the, the airmen were in the in the low 40s. They all combined all four of them together. Mm-hmm. Gosh, that's a great song. Well, I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know it wasn't promoted. I didn't know anything about it. Oh, really? The, I think the it was one a, that was it promoted was a, is the one that's coming up on Labor Day. Right. That one was, uh, Chestnuts was last second, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When they, yeah. I, the event. Yeah. Well, the event, they had the event and they went ahead and uh, they just called Joey, said, sure. I didn't would. even hear about it, honestly. No, I didn't hear a thing about it. But he really that's is really a good cool. guy. Oh, he's a, he's a good guy. guy. And, and you know what? I think he really missed going to Nathan's. I'm sh- I, we, could you imagine? Yeah. I mean, Do you it, think he's going to be back next year? You yes. Think so? I bet they'd get him I'm back. I'm sure they will. I, I I'm they sure they'll fix back. this. But, They're um, saving some vegan the, ones just for him. Was he able to eat his vegan dogs at this know. particular? No, this was just hot dogs. Just was just regular hot yeah. dogs. Okay. See, and he didn't have a problem with that. I think that's what, you know, it was business for him. He's got to make a living. Well, of course he's got to make a living. And if somebody offers you, know, you big money to come over this way, and I, I look, I was reading yesterday, uh, you know, eating one hot dog takes 30 seconds, 30, 36 seconds of your life. Maybe. I've never, <laughs> never tried hot dog, comp- hot dog eating competition. Uh, one hot dog, I think it said it took, it takes like so 30 seconds. Joey, seconds so 36, okay. 36 seconds of your and life. Joey has, I mean, he said he only has, you know, he can't do this forever. Sure. So he only has so many years to be a competitive eater. So, you know, he does. The this Kobayashi is his job. Thing, he yeah. needs to make some money. But the Kobayashi thing is going to be really cool. Yeah. Everybody wants to see that. Yeah. I guarantee you that'll get more views than the time break. They, haven't, so. they have not faced each other since 2009. Yeah. I, this is really going to be a cool thing. And I know yep. he's probably training for it. And this was probably good training. Yeah. You know, this five minute deal. I heard him say once that one of the secrets is his hands. So many people want to just hold the thing. He uses his whole fist to just shove it in, and everybody else tries to hold on to a hot dog to put it in. He has, uh, I mean, he seriously works out. I mean, he his he works out with the muscles in his stomach and his neck, his mouth, like with weights. <laughs> Terry, I'm not kidding you. He like ties his his chin to a weight thing. I'm not kidding you. You know, uh, Terry, his fiance. I've seen the I've seen the documentary. It's a great documentary his, about John. His fiance Bree works at our Allisonville location. She's a sweetheart, and she has to take off work to help him train. Because it's a real thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a real thing. When he gets close to a competition, so. Westfield's own Joey Chestnut. So very good. Very exciting for Joey. We That's promise the second hour will, will be better. I thought this we one promise. was out pretty good. Yeah. It was like a uh, it. it was like a Sunday morning news magazine. Uh-huh. Right. Except it's Saturday. It's really Saturday. <laughs> How many seconds do I have left? Four. Four. 93 WIBC. <laughs> Hit the music. Here we go. Some folks say that grown-up men are still just little boys That really the only difference is the price of our toys We go for macho symbols like guns and running shoes Pickup trucks, hunting ducks, and <clears throat> power tools Power tools Hey, good morning. Welcome. My name is Pat. It's my friend Denny. Hey, Pat. And my other friend Terry. Hi. Good and morning. Jimmy is behind the board. Or Landon. What, what, Orlando? Uh, Land, Landon. Landon. Landon is his yeah. name? Yeah. I mean, that's on his birth certificate. Mm. He's my son. 
Whoa, whoa, yes. whoa. Yeah. Lance and well, Mama are listening. That. His mom and dad, they ain't going to like that. You must be very proud of him. Oh, I'm proud of him. He's Seven, a good boy. Seven pounds, three he's ounces. Good. Yeah, wow. he was a small child. He just spurted right I around I thought the way uh, you guys, grade. yeah. I, I could tell there was something there. Well, he's very, he's my, he's my favorite. Hmm. <laughs> he's of, my favorite son. Of your children? Of all my children. Yeah. Hmm. I missed that soap opera. Wasn't that yeah. a soap opera? I, I remember all my yeah. children. Desperately. I loved it. I think that was my soap opera, too. All my children with Erica. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Used to watch it between football practices in the summer. <laughs> A lot bad. of football players got caught up in it. I mean, <laughs> real honest to goodness athletes. Well, what about General athletes. Hospital? Remember General Hospital? Yeah, yeah that wasn't on. my that wasn't my soap. No, all my children. All my children. Uh, Landon, it's uh, good you were on the phone because uh, I was kind of Terry kinda just not listening. Terry just claimed you as as, <laughs> Aww, as your mother. You did? Yeah, I did. All right, let's talk to Steve. Hi, Steve. Uh, good morning, Pat. Uh, first of all, I had a great time with my sister-in-law and wife uh, spending part of my 4th of July there at uh, Sullivan Hardware there on Keystone. Oh, that's great, Steve. I think I saw you. You Yes, and uh, they, they did take advantage. Is the sale still going on at the Yellow House right now? <laughs> um, everything's for sale, yeah. <laughs> Hey, the, the reason I'm calling is, is, is to let Denny know that you made a mistake on the uh, Fort Bliss. Fort Bliss is an Army installation. Ah, and I Joey said Air Chestnut Force. Was, Joey Chestnut was competing yeah. against soldiers, and it is home of America's Tank Division, the first oh. Army Division. You know, Steve, I would have thought uh, that makes me feel better because I know if it was uh, airmen, they probably would have eaten more hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. uh, just oh, trying to, just trying to stir it up, goodness, Steve. He poked him. Just trying to stir it up. Exactly. And, and you know, I'm really excited about seeing the Sullivan Express ceremonial unit in the uh, fried chicken parade today. <laughs> They've got their maneuvers down. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> See you later, man. I still like the thing from Titanic when he gets up on the top, puts his hands out to the side. There's no lieutenant on a on a uh, motorcycle for an IMPD. They can do that. I mean, they're doing that on the top of a train. Oh, sure. We're working on that. We've gone through like four people so far. <laughs> Joining us on the program is our own JMV. John, good morning. Good morning to you all. What a glorious morning it is, too, by the way. Wow, it is a great. glorious morning. Uh, we took Fulton uh, on the air right off the bat because uh, we are concerned about his health after being hit by a car in Cicero. I, I heard that story. Yeah, so. I, I haven't been on other than Monday this week. This will be my first time back uh, on the air tonight on B, but, uh, yeah, I heard about the story for Fulton. I think he is okay, though. He's got a talent show tomorrow that I've heard about. He played the ukulele for us. He sounds just fine. He did uh, Wagon Wheel. He did great. He did, yep, Wagon Wheel or (laughs) what Rocker was it called? (laughs) Yeah, by Hootie. Yeah. Darius Rocker. Yeah. So, uh, John, uh, so you you just took the entire week off? I took off uh, Tuesday. And Wednesday, which were not offered, and then we were off Thursday and Friday. So I just kind of combined it. So I went in Monday and uh, did a little recap, and then I haven't been in wow. since. And it was uh, it was good. So I've done a lot of sitting around and doing nothing. Have you got awesome. all your fingers and toes? Did you blow anything up, John? Yeah, you know what? It's funny. I don't really mess with uh, the whole fireworks thing. You know, this goes all the way back to, you know, buying fireworks from the trunk of Emil Fields back in 1982. I kind of liked it when I was 12, but uh, <laughs> sure. we drove around. We drove around. I drove Laney up to Bluff Creek, which was a great place to see. You could see all the way to Mooresville from Bluff Creek, which is right off of I-69 and 144 right there. Great golf course. And uh, you could see all the way to Mooresville. Then you could see downtown as well. So you could see the downtown stuff from a distance, obviously. But it was, uh, you could see, yeah, everybody that had their very own, their homemade, like, fireworks displays, which was everywhere. Yep. You could pretty much see it all to the west, to the northwest, and to the north. It was pretty cool. You know, I'm, I'm not, I love, I'm, I mean, I do like professional fireworks. I come into an event, uh, the neighborhood has gotten completely out of control with sure. what they're shooting off, and, and it's it feels like a... A public display of you know expensive, um, but I I kind of wish we'd kind of turn to drones, because have you seen some of these drone shows? Very cool. Yep. Oh my gosh! Yeah. 
That's they a minimum are, of eighty thousand dollars oh, for a drone show. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll bet you they spend over a hundred thousand for the fireworks shows. Oh, that's just at Hammers. Okay. <laughs> that's Jason Hammer. I love these drone shows they're putting together with eagles, and I mean, it was yeah. some of them with were just spectacular. And I'd kind of like to do more drone stuff. Yeah, I, we're I, a little I, more traditional. Yeah. yeah, Terry, I think we're in a spot where most people. At least around here, right? Especially where I'm from around here, not going to buy into the whole drone thing. It's probably always going to be lighting something up and blowing something up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going I, to be. Yeah. I, it, it's, it, we were driving around, and we would, like, drive past people's driveways. And they were literally letting them off, you know, right next to the road. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Some of the uh, – are driving by, you're writing them off right next to the road. So, I, you know. Didn't didn't hurt me, and I I haven't heard at least of in a drone show. Yeah, would it be so. easy to jam a signal? Like you know, they can only have so many frequencies. I mean, if you could get a hold of the, you know, the belly button of the of the eagle, you could probably make him do anything. Yeah. If you could hack the yeah, it hack would, the frequency. It would be the uh, probably like the uh, Chinese dragon. Because oh, China would be. I don't know what see, any of that. All that. Oh, what you're meaning China, China, is. China. I understand. China. Break into our drone <laughs> signals. <laughs> Boy. Jam it, jam it, Denny. Jam That's it. What we're doing. Yeah. Well, I so, do. Th- I think it's a very uh, dangerous time uh, this weekend for thirteen, probably twelve to fourteen-year-old boys. They seem to be always that. I mean, that's this is their <laughs> thing. When we were kids, thing. man, everything was was fireworks. Yeah. Well, when we were growing up, guys, it was like July the fourth. You let them off, it was over. Now it's the fifth, the sixth, sixth the yeah. seventh, the eighth. And uh, until all these fireworks, the former Arby's locations would turn into fireworks shops uh, until they're gone now. (laughs) Right. And they're out of of merchandise. Hey, hey Gladys, you're sounding a little bit, uh, you know. (laughs) Well, I mean, now it's the fifth and the sixth it. and the seventh. It's just, I, I think it's just gotten a little crazy. Well, it is. And, Everyone's having and, a good and, time. Just be safe. Well, just be safe. But I just don't know how we got to the the um, the types of fireworks we're allowed to buy now. I know. Terry, I mean, it's called freedom. I understand. That. I really do. But I think some of it is, we, let's talk to some emergency room people. <laughs> you know what? And, you and can't fix you. stupid no matter what you do with more laws. I miss charcoal worms. <laughs> you, I miss charcoal worms. Worms, you, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you you can uh, fix it. You can do a little little more training. Uh, you know what? Here's the thing. You can't when fix you hear, stupid. Listen. Stupid listen, is stupid. Denny. You can fix dumb, but you can't Denny, fix stupid. Listen to me. So the firework experts always say this. Yeah. You know, you're best not to do those at home. It would be better to go to, to a, a professional, right? Right, right, right? But people yeah. aren't going to do that. So wouldn't it be better to show people how to take a mortar tube and screw it down to a piece of plywood so it doesn't get kicked over and take out grandma? Those would be like... Would be nice, but right. I know, you know... They're, Always like hold you your arm out. Yeah, you're going to do and, what you're going to do. And hear. don't ever look down inside of a, a, yeah. a tube. Those would be practical things, but they don't do that because no. it's always, you know... Yep. Hey, guys, I heard what Denny almost said. Denny almost quoted a film that's celebrating its 30th anniversary today. Jackass. Do you know what that is? Jackass. What is it? What is it? No, Denny almost said stupid is as stupid, stupid does. does. Oh, and uh, Forrest Gump. Yeah. Forrest Gump oh. on this day. What's amazing about that is it detailed Forrest Gump's fictitious life of 30 years. And now it's been 30 years since it was released to where we are. Do you know the I ceremony? Why Sasha didn't cover that. Yeah, well, when, she didn't when Lyndon Johnson either. took the Medal of Honor and put it over Forrest Gump, do you know who that really was? I do not, Denny. Who was it? It was Sammy Davis. That was Sammy Davis. He got that. Oh, from Indiana. That, from Indiana. So, they, of course, they did the AI right. or whatever they did, but they got... Right. They got, uh, it, anyway, Sammy Davis, but Forrest Gump's picture was in it. I'll be darned. How about that? What's your favorite era from the film of the eras where they covered ba- the 50s, 60s, 70s, and barely into the early 80s? What's your favorite era of it? Oh, I liked it when he was on, uh, was it Alabama, uh, the, yeah. the, f- the football yeah. team? I'd run for it. I like the 60s yeah, part. Uh, me too. 60s part was my favorite. Ping pong. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I forgot I about ping I've pong. I've watched it 12 <laughs> times at various starting points in the last couple of weeks, just on nearly every day, which is great. Um, if you notice, when he gets his discharge from the Army, 
Um, he's in a high school gym practicing ping pong, and there's a three-point line in this gym, which there's an inaccuracy right there, oh. a three-point line. And I believe in seven when they go from 71 to 72, they celebrate New Year's in New York, and uh, Forrest Gump's drinking to Dr. Pepper. I think that that was – a more modernized Dr. Pepper bottle. I, I could be wrong about that, but I believe those are really the only two inaccuracies that I found. But it's uh it is it's absolutely amazing. That's a great film. A great film. And thirty years thirty years of detailing Forrest Gump's life and then, you know, thirty years since that uh, point in time. Wow. Speaking Pretty of awesome. Dr. Pepper, have you seen this nonsense of putting pickles in Dr. Pepper? Johnny, have you seen uh, that? I have not. What, what happened? Terry Lynn, uh, well, Kylan, the, the first day, they brought in Dr. Pepper and they put these pickles in it. And these two ladies in here are going nuts over it. It tastes good. Is it I'm, good? It's delicious. Really? It oh. is not delicious. It, I it love pickles. It's delicious. Denny would only take a little tiny girly He's a sip. sissy. I tried to, and I tried to eat one he's of the pickles sissy. and wash it yeah. down with a Dr. Pepper. No. He, he pretends like he sips well, brand, I'm glad brandy John, all day. I'm, I'm glad yeah, John, I don't smoking a cigar. <laughs> Could we argue that Dr. Pepper is the most originally flavored yes. soft drink among all soft drinks. Yeah. The most now, let's want to think about that. Wait just a minute. Okay, you're saying it's the most original taste? Yeah, it's not going to be the most popular, mm. but I think because it is so original, yeah. it it exceeds a lot of popularity of others yeah. that probably have had I haven't had one a forever lot more time and, and yeah. a lot more money behind it. I'm, I, I could be wrong. I kind of I got I got to say I liked Mr. Pibb better. No <laughs> Mr. way. Pibb, that was no a root way. beer wannabe. I loved it. No, it was oh, a Dr. Pepper wannabe. Get out of here. Yeah. It was a Dr. Pepper wannabe. Hey, John, can you handle a compliment? I ran into a buddy and he said, is that really John calling in, JMV calling in on Saturdays? And I no, said, it's yes, AI. It is. It, I said, yes, it is. And he said, you tell him from me that he does the best sports show because he knows what he's talking about and it's coming from his memory. He's not reading it. He remembers it. Anyway, you got a fan, okay? That's, 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 uh, tell your friend or the person you met um, that that's awesome. Too. You know, I learned that. That's what Mark Patrick did. I spent so many years with Mark Patrick, and he never he never brought in a detailed you know itinerary of what he was going to do or anything like that. He kind of just went on a lot of memory. And I think what that does is, is at least what I try to do. I mean, you, you try to make it a, a family and friendship type of discussion you know what i mean it's like you're having a discussion with people yep. you're hanging out with your ability to remember things yeah. so quickly john it, people are listening and maybe even yeah. on saturday i love it hey, by the way too speaking of this weekend days of the dead have you guys ever heard of this no you call that days sunday yeah. it is the well it's the celebration days of the dead is the celebration it started yesterday it's at the uh, marriott east of basically horror movies but just you know entertainment in general and John Lovitz is out on the east side at the Marriott. I don't know what horror movie he was in, but and I, but this is not a horror movie either. It's funny. They are celebrating, and I guess a reunion of a lot of the cast of Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, that's cool! Wow, Marriott right now east, at the Marriott right East now. off of uh, Shadeland, right? Exactly. Twenty first so, uh, in Shadeland. Booger is out there. Curtis Armstrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is there? That's so um, cool. And, yeah, and uh, so is the guy that yells "nerds," you know. <laughs> yeah. um, and they're they're all out there, but it's uh, it's always a really cool event where you get you get to meet some people that you you go, "Oh wow, yeah, I remember that person," and then you find out how many other films that you really liked that they were in that you kind of have forgotten. That's about. so but fun. I'm just going to go sit in the parking lot. Days of the Dead. Days, Days of the Dead. Yeah, Today. Cold. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yes, you got the Revenge of the Nerds. I think Carradine's Robert Carradine's out there, and uh, John Lovitz. Yeah. And John yeah, Lovitz. John Lovitz. <laughs> John yeah. Lovitz out, yes, yeah. John Lovitz is out there. You got uh, got a lot of good folks. Days of the Dead. You said the, the Nerds. Yeah, the Nerds. Uh. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. John, we got to say goodbye. It's getting downhill here. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Hey, tonight I'm back. A little JMV takeover tonight. Good deal. B105.7. There you go. Thank you, John. See you guys. All right. Tonight, and uh, if you haven't heard John, he is on our uh, sister station. Oh, you don't, you're not supposed to say sister station. How anymore. come? You say broadcast partner. I uh, learned it from Fox 59. Is that the new rule? No, well, that's Fox 59 doing it. So we don't say sister station Well, broadcast station partners anymore. are two broadcast different media. Partner. No, they're okay. two different media. Do they say that about Channel 4? 
Is that what you're saying? Because we're radio, they're television. So broadcast partners would be two different media. That's what we usually say when we, when we are recognizing right, our like broadcast. Right, W-I-S-H-T-V. Right. Right. That's Wish. Part. Well, they're, got they're the, talking about two... Radio stations. No, they're talking about two TV stations, Fox 59 and Channel 4. CBS. They're broadcast partners. They're broadcast partners because today at 1 o'clock, the Fever will be playing on Fox 59's broadcast partner, CBS 4. Why can't we say sister station? All right. Our sister station is where you'll find John Monday through Friday from 3 until he gets tired, and usually around 6 o'clock. All right. And that is on two frequencies. Uh, north of India, I believe, is 93.5. And kind of the south would be 107.5. Right? Uh, yeah. I believe so. That's okay. it. You That's all I got. Okay. All right. Yep. We're coming right back. Our number, 239-9393. And we'll take your calls, 93WIBC. Liberating strife Who more than self Our country loved And the mercy more than life America All right, Jimmy, let me tell you a little something about uh, about music. Okay. You're going to play a song like that. You're going to have to play the whole song practically. (laughs) Because (laughs) nothing better. No host is going to talk over the top of it. Because like, I was looking at Denny, and Denny was just like he was just lost in oh, the song. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. oh, I mean, I love this song, too. I always think of the scene from The yeah. Sandlot, their 4th of July uh, night games. That was yeah. the first time I ever heard that song. I'm just saying your You're host. You're kidding me. I'm just saying your host is not going to crack his mic. No, when I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, by the way, guys, there's still a shit going on. <laughs> that organ that played with Ray Charles was uh, a specific type of speaker. It was a rotating speaker called Leslie. And it was very, Leslie. very, very prevalent in churches, and uh, they, it just went perfect with him. And he he called that in specifically. He wanted that type of an organ and speaker as his backup. I said, his call piano Leslie. Playing. Get her over there. <laughs> no, it's a Leslie speaker. John joins us on the program. Hey, John. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I, I'm from Columbus, Indiana, the home of the Athens of the Prairie, the Columbus North Bulldogs. And the Columbus East Olympians. Woo! Wow. Well, uh, and we got beautiful architecture. Columbus, come and visit us. Yes, you do. And number two, when is a good time to sow turnip seed? Oh, early. No, you know what? You can always get a second. People will start. Uh, that's the one. Uh, even when I was a kid and the seed company would come pick up the rack of seeds, my dad would always say, make sure you hold on to the turnip seeds. Really? Yep. You, for a second crop? Because mm-hmm. normally that's that's a cold weather crop. We yep. can put them in early. So I would say in August, probably early August, you could start planting okay. them. No, number two, I'm the guy that y'all called you one time. She's got all the green tractors. Oh, yeah. It's been a while. I'm in a rehab again in Franklin, but doing good. Hope they get out the end of the month. Well, that's good. How long you been in? I mean, since February. Oh, my gosh. My legs are bad. So oh, shoot. That's it. But I listen to every Saturday morning to you. I enjoy your things, and I'll be listening to Moan on. Columbus is a very good town. It really is. John, thank you very much. We appreciate that, and we Get appreciate well soon, your call. Buddy. Get yeah. well soon. Yeah, we actually uh, we have quite a few customers down in Columbus that come up. We actually go down. We set up Christmas trees down there in the uh, – the Commons, which is like a little shopping center. Their, architect- their architecture, uh, Commons, was always very, very supportive of the arts. 
and they uh, they have really neat things. So one thing I remember is the Oil Can Church, which has now been, it was in the Disciples of Christ forever, but now they have decommissioned it. I don't know what they're going to make it into, but it looks like an upside-down oil can. So they, But the bridges, the buildings, um, really known nationwide, Pat. Is that all from, uh, what, what's down there, uh, Cook Medical, right? Uh, Cook's in Bloomington. in Bloomington. No, it's Cummins. Cummins, that's yeah. right. So... Uh, 239-9393. Uh, today's show is completely pre-recorded <laughs> because we are actually in, at home enjoying our families on this holiday weekend. So I want to know, you. we made this one adjustment from 14% to 19% or from 19 to 14%. So did they ask you to speak or did they just take other audio from you and create it? They just took other audio. That is amazing. They feed the audio into the AI machine. We're talking about... Uh, there was a little change in one of my spots that run during the week for and you uh, couldn't get down here to cut it. So they just used AI to change it from a fifteen percent discount to a nineteen percent discount, and really, I cannot tell. That's really scary, yeah. you know. That, that because all of my excuses are pre-programmed for my wife, and now that I know somebody can change them and in get me in, in in more mm-hmm. trouble, I'm sorry. That's not. That's it not is right. a little scary. Remember the thing we had last week with uh, Danny's voice? Yeah. Yeah. Do you still have that? You know what? I think we Somewhere. play it when we come back. If yeah, you I, find I, it. I can try to find it. Yeah. That's not right. See, you shouldn't be messing with that. That's like, you know, undressing a man publicly. You shouldn't do that. No. Don't be undress using my a man voice. public. I don't, I don't think that's going to be a problem. <laughs> uh, 239-9393. Uh, we went a little long, so we're coming right back. 93 WIBC. I started singing bye bye Miss American Pie. Drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. Them good old boys were drinking whiskey and rye and singing, This'll be the day that I die. This'll be the day that I die. Now for ten years we've been on our own and Moss Grove. You know, John uh, JMV was saying that it's the 30th anniversary of. Uh, Forrest Gump. That's right. It also, this Christmas, is the 60th anniversary of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <gasps> is it really? Mm-hmm. Oh. I have big plans at the store. To celebrate Rudolph? Yep. And the 60th anniversary. It's kind of funny because when we were at the trade show in January, I saw it in one uh, booth, you know, celebrating 60. And then, so I was in another one that had a ton of... Uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer stuff, puzzles and all this. Kind of, I said, yeah. I said, and it's 60 years. They go, it is? And they were selling the stuff. So they got really excited when I told them. So you you've bought you purchased some special yes, stuff. Yes, I did. For the, for the celebration. Yes. Well, you know, everybody's thinking about Christmas in July. This is going to be a fun year. Oh, yes. It's going to be a fun year. The election will be over. We'll be ready to celebrate no matter what. <laughs> oh, uh, so we, ta- we were talking about AI uh, and how it's starting to kind of creep into our thing. And so last week uh, from the Hammer and Nigel show, uh, Allison got us a little sample of what it could be. Hi, Who's- Denny Smith here. Coming up on the Home and Garden Show, I'll tell you the best soil to bury a body. Let's face it, living in Indianapolis, there will eventually be a time where you or a friend will need to dispose of a body just like in The Sopranos. Maybe you killed them, maybe not, but the last thing you want is big clumps of dirt making your lawn look bad. We'll discuss that after Pat Sullivan's segment on how to torch your house for the insurance money. How about See, that? I mean, it's a little. I mean, that's doesn't a, sound exactly like Danny, I think but it's pretty. It's pretty uh, darn. The, it's very, very close. Very close. That is just. In wrong. fact, I don't know yeah. how it could not be him. That yeah. is just wrong. Did he really do this? And he's now. Um, no, here's the I did. Do you, Terry Lynn, Stacy, I did what he things we're doing. Why? Why do you think he bought a farm? Oh, that's right. Hey, we got the hay in this week, mm-hmm. and have you seen the new hay bale? No one ever sees the clumps in the hay. The new hay bales are patriotic. Hmm. Half of it is blue and half of it is red and white stripes so that when they do the rolls, it looks like a flag. It is really cool. The farmers are going to that now. You can buy hay and 
Well, no, a, a roll hay, a, you know, they call them rolls. Right. But when they come out of the machine, they have to wrap oh, them to keep wrap them together. Them, yeah. And they, they have three red stripes, a couple white stripes, and then the blue, and it looks like American flags out in the field. It's really oh. cool. God bless the farmers. Yeah. God bless the farmers. God bless Amen. a few farmers. It was interesting that we lost thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of farms in this last year, but they're producing more. Yep. So they're figuring out a way to do it with less land. Sure. It all starts with Roundup. Because you know why they care. <laughs> it all starts with Roundup. This is about to fall apart. It all starts with Roundup. The oh, yeah. wheel is wobbling on the axle. It's uh, about to break. You brought up the farmers break. and it made me think about them. How my Boom, there it goes. Them. Three wheels and one broken <laughs> axle. Okay. Uh, regular Jeff joins us on the program. Hi, Jeff. Hey there. Hey, it's actually AI Jeff. Oh. You don't know. You're on vacation as well. I am. Yeah. So I really didn't have anything to say today besides what are the sales there, Pat. And uh, as far as Denny goes, uh -oh. what, uh, love you, Terry. Love you, Terry. Love you too, Jeff. Um, as far as Denny goes, yesterday the family came over and we did a little thing for 4th of July. And my daughter, re I save everything that every time on the, on the radio, right, I save it. Yeah. So we went through the whole thing, and she said, you need to be more mean to Denny. And I was like, Denny. Oh, yeah. yeah. thank you. I like your daughter. It's the only one of the family. Yeah, well, hey, funny. next to you, of course. Who, I'm sorry. Who is who is this brainiac child? <laughs> it's like great. A, oh, but anyway, she said, well, he's just been so mean to you and everything. And I said, well, Pat used to be the one that was mean. Now Pat loves me, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is AI, Jeff. You know yeah. that plumbers only tease you if they love you. All right? That's the rule. That's, That's what I made her do us. is look at the pictures. <laughs> look through the pictures and see Denny had his hand on my shoulder. Pat got nowhere near me. <laughs> I don't like people. <laughs> yeah. That's true fact. <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are or what you look like or anything uh, right. or where you come from. Yeah. It's, it's everybody. Yep. I don't know. Did you guys have a good holiday? Yeah, we did. How about you, Jeff? Yeah, we did. Like I said, whenever family's involved, man, that's the most precious thing you could ever bring. Because how long are we going to be on this earth? Well, the Lord, you know. Only God me. Depends on what kind of fireworks, I guess. True. Well, I got all my I got all my digits left. That's I'll good. See you. Have a good one. All right, you see you, too. Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Hmm, there you go. You can bail pretty quick. Bail. He knows when, just you, talking about, yeah, hey. when it's over. Oh, yeah. oh, I like what you did. Yeah. Uh, hey, <laughs> lis listen to who we have here. Sort of sneaks up on George you. George Faber from uh, Faber B. Window. Hey, George. How you doing, Pat? We're doing good. How was the holiday? You know, it's fantastic. It's always great when you uh, have a chance to be with your family. And I know you've got a large extended family, and as does, as does Denny. And so... I wanted to announce some exciting news today. Um, Pam and I have uh, sold our business to another family. What? Wait a minute. Yes. Wait a minute. Did everybody know this but us? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, the family, you know, it's nothing like a family business, and you know that well um, in terms of the service and the value that you give to the customer and so we have this family of 100 employees that uh, have done a phenomenal job over 40 years of delivering high-quality product. And uh, a number of people that have worked for us 30, you know, 20, 30-plus years and in doing that. And so what Pam and I decided to do was to sell the, the uh, company. <gasps> oh, oh, no. Oh, my gosh. No. What happened? Call them back. Right call them back there at that moment when we were all waiting you know that's the hardest decision Selling for a family to the employee maybe oh i don't know that's one of the hardest things to you know you build your business up hold and on he's coming he's coming back he's coming back let him tell this story yeah let him tell it um <laughs> bad is like his phone was crackling a little bit but i didn't expect it. it to drop he's so probably, all these years it's man those are tough decisions you have to make. They are tough decisions, and I hope it's a good one because there's a family business out on my side of town, out east, that sold the business, and 
It's never the same. Oh, come on. Would you be a little bit it? positive no, there? No, I'm telling you, so it was it, never the same. So it didn't go to the family? It, it did not go to family. It just sold it. But it, it, that, it's keeping that family name, but he's back. George? Pat? So, you, so here's where you dropped off. You were saying, so Pam and I made the decision to sell. That's when you went That's off. That's when you went off the air. Oh, then we dropped. Oh, uh, well, what we decided to do was to sell to another family, and uh, and that family is the uh, hundred employees in B Window. Uh, we are now an employee owned uh, business. <gasps> that is really I cool, George. Love that. Uh, and it, it's uh, what's called an ESOP employee stock option plan, and it's to reward your employees internally for all their hard work and effort in delivering high quality jobs to your customer. And um, so as of a week ago, Friday, uh, Pam and I now are employees of the company. We are continuing to work in the company, but uh, the employees now own the company and it's a benefit that we feel as, as obviously the company continues to grow and uh, the shares uh, of the company increase uh, the employees are the ones that are going to share in that. So it's a pretty exciting time for us. And it kind of guarantees that that uh, quality workmanship and materials that B Window is known for, that that will continue because there's no one, the, the same guys are in the driver's seat. Well, and you know, Pat, with your own family business, uh, and Denny obviously being in the family business, there is, compared to a big box or a super large corporation, no one delivers value better than a, than a family business. Uh, when you have an issue and you come with whatever it is, and you come in and you're able to see the owner or owners of the business, it gets taken care of. And a lot of times in a big box situation it's you're just a number and so we think this is going to be really great for our customers uh not only ones in the future but also people that we've worked for and and will service if there's any issues into the future so pretty exciting time good for you guys well congratulations you. Yeah. uh to you and pam george mm -hmm. we appreciate that and that big announcement yeah big announcement and thank you for the because you're building that company as you have and continuing to give back to community which you have continuous to, continually done there Amazing. you go uh you can go to bwindow.com for more information and uh see all the specials everything going on that's bwindow.com That's just so cool that uh, B Window, George and Pam Faber. Now, it's a good story. Yeah. How, how would you love it if you were, you know, 15, 20 year employee and then you get to buy in and, yeah. and be part owner of it? I thought that's really cool. Makes a difference. Makes a difference on what you do now if we're taking that step forward. Now you're part owner of the company. That's right. You know, okay, now, now, you're gonna, now all of a sudden, you'll be, now you're going <laughs> to, I mean. Now least, do you I'm need a new truck? Myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it happened to me, what <laughs> would I do first and what would I have to change immediately, mm -hmm. like, you know, as an owner? Yeah, but you know how you're all crying for new trucks. <laughs> no, no <laughs> truck. Drive the old ones. <laughs> you'll be fine. I always thought it'd be fun to like, like, um, you know, like a, to own up to be a part owner of a team. You know how they do, like in Wisconsin, like you you can be a, a, an owner, a share owner of a football. Oh team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it would be so cool to have that share. Yeah. And how different you would feel, as you know. Listen, I've I've got my here's my papers. Mm -hmm. I'm part owner of this team. That's It'd right. It'd be super cool. Yeah, and that is uh, true with our Indians. There is a. Can you own the Indians? Well, they don't like to talk about it, but. But you could in buy the a 19, share? In the 1940s or 50s, they sold shares, I believe, to save the team. They had to raise so much money. And so I think there's like maybe, uh, I hate to say it, but well, something like 800 story. shares that are. So 
uh, my family actually had like two or three shares. Uh, so you're part owner. The family uh, is they're, a, they're in, a tiny, I, silent owner. When my uh, parents uh, passed away, then I think two of my sisters have each have a share. How do you feel about that? You know, I... Uh, they got it and you didn't. Well, it, it Terry, was... Terry, are you trying to bitter? start at, something? At bitter? the time in the... Uh, I will tell you this. In the time, <laughs> the uh, shares in the estate were valued at $26,000 each. And I think now they're... I read somewhere they're way more just like pay lakes and liquor stores yeah. everything goes up in price there you go pay lakes for terry lynn who wants to buy a pay lake and pat who loved to buy a liquor store did i tell you that i went to oni bush's funeral <laughs> did you really yeah i think that's how we ended up with shares from owen bush and i remember being at his funeral and my dad goes hey there's lefty something you know like all the old ball players that's cool. And his funeral went the last, like, on his way to the cemetery, they took one last spin around Bush Stadium and went how, to the cemetery. How long ago was that? Oh, I was a kid. I was going to say, how old? You must have just oh, been a child. 10, 12, something like that. I love what they've done out at Bush Stadium. The no, old no, Bush no. Stadium. Oh, yeah, oh, the old Bush the, Stadium. How they've turned those with the in. apartments it's, and stuff. It's really, you it's don't really know cool. how cool it is unless you kind of go in. All the green space oh, and stuff. It's awesome. I wonder how many units they got in all that. I don't know, but it is, it's is—it's like you're at a ba- baseball stadium when you look out into the courtyard. Yeah. Because it's a baseball stadium. <laughs> Please tell me they took that, that old structure all the way down. They had to have, right? What do you mean? Well, I mean, they... Denny, do you know? They kept some of the foundation and built off the foundation, but the superstructure above that foundation should have been torn down while they were still <laughs> playing ball. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> the seats kept getting uh, smaller because of the amount of paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Okay, what's next on your... <laughs> well, uh, what I was going to... I was going to plug Evening at the Garden at Sullivan Hardware and Garden. Uh, I had a working name of uh, Lamellation, but... <clears throat> I was Sorry. voted uh, down by my family. So evening at the garden is evening in the garden is on the 20th of uh, this month. It is going to be unbelievable. We have so many. We're going to feature so many local restaurants like Ambrosia, mm. Chilita, mm. Street Tacos, Fernando's in Broad Ripple is really good. Uh, Upland Brewery, Half Liter, 317 Barbecue which we ate at uh, this week, uh, and then uh, Sully's Grill and uh, Harder Brunch. Oh, wow. So that is on the 20th. Uh, my Yellow Rickshaw will uh, be uh, uh, having the entertainment. So it starts at 6 o'clock, uh, and it's going to be a great time. So you go to SullivanHardware.com for tickets, and we'll see you out there in the garden. We're coming right back, 93 WIBC. Say that grown up men are still just little boys. That really the only difference is the price of our toys. We go for macho symbols like guns and running shoes, pickup trucks, hunt ducks, and power tools. Power tools. Power tools. Power tools. Power tools. Yeah, you just plug them in the wall. And it's the Home and Garden Show. There's no way you. this is Nigel. It is. It's, well, no. he wanted us to know that at the at the old, you know, Bush Stadium, yeah, it's all apartments, apartments now. Yeah. And I said, yeah. And hey, you listen to our show. You read the next line, Pat. He says, yeah. He's at Exercise Inc. He's well, there okay. a little bit early. Oh, so he because says, this is why I didn't think it was Nigel, because it said, I'm sitting outside exercising. It's like, there's no way. No, no. He's he, exercising. He really does. I, he showed, I, he was there when I was there one time, but he says, yeah, and I'm checking it out. When are you doing the beer bong challenge? And I said, that's a Pat question. Mm. When are you going to do the beer bong challenge with that? Uh, you know, that's, uh, I'm not sure that's something that, I do a lot of other things, but maybe I could just go over and like change a faucet or something <laughs> for him. Yeah. I'll, beer bong challenge. I could, I could check the, uh, 
basic cranking, cold cranking amps of their batteries. But yeah. I, don't, I don't want to do beer bong challenge. I think you should. No, there's no way I'm doing that. I'll take one of your guys' spots okay. on the beer bong challenge. You had a chance. Why didn't I, you do it? I, I haven't been personally asked by has terry Jason. done it yet you were no, shooting but we need terry you to were shooting maybe that whiskey terry, from the the from the Chris celebrity Lytle. yeah oh my god that was the hottest thing i've maybe ever checked in my life terry should represent this show nigel on behalf the beer bong of the challenge. home and garden yeah no. terry stacy's gonna do the beer bong challenge we'll send her in i, I don't think allison Fridays. will do it because she's on the Friday. board but maybe we should see if we can get joey Chestnut to do it. To do it, he'd do it. That would be awesome. And you know he'd down in that thing in like a second. Oh, he'd be so fast. He can't open his his throat up like an iguana. I mean, he can really open that bad boy up. Okay, Nige, we'll get back to you on this one. Yeah, maybe Joey could represent this show. Oh yeah, that'd be great on the Hammer and Nigel show. I mean, friend wise, I mean, really, he's probably best friends with this show. Yeah, he's 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 a fun guy. He's still the humble Joey that he. You know, he, looks I, that he was when he was growing up with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? That's hey, we sure. really are brought to you by the Michaelis Corporation. Water, storms, fire, and wet basements. Life happens. Michaelis happens to help you through it. That, 844 fix in Was that AI? It was. <laughs> because that was a horrible breed. I thought it sounded just like It was you. like, it's almost like you're on the Titanic or something. All right, we'll try it again here. Ready? Three, two, one. Brought to you by the Michaelis Corporation. Oh, Water, storms, fire, like, wet no, basements, no. life happens. Michaelis happens to help uh, you that's through. Insincere, it. Insincere, four, fix it. insincere, fake. Yeah. Let me do it. All right. Three, two, one. Water, storms, fire, and wet basements. You forgot the brought to you by Michaelis. Three, two, one. The Home and Garden Program brought you in part by the Michaelis Corporation. Water, storms, fire, and wet basements. Life happens. Michaelis happens to help you through it. That sounds real. Yeah. You forgot the phone number. People, the thing is, you don't want to overload them with information. I just gave a very emotional read, and people just need to kind of sit in a quiet spot for a second you know and what listen on, to what they just heard. You know what they, they used to say on Hawaii Five O? Book them, Dano. Yep, that's, that's a keeper, Pat. Yeah. I'm sure it is. Um, I have a neighbor question. Okay. Oh, good. You ready? So the uh, Dear Neighbor segment is when you send your complaints about your neighbor to Terry, because you don't want to talk to him. It, and we don't mention names or anything, but it will help you emotionally if you're if, if you're heard. Yeah. Okay. If you're heard. Okay. So this is this is a neighbor question. Oh, it's not a statement? No, it's it's actually needing some help. And, but, but listen, I'm all about neighbors. Remember, I used to have the Neighbor to Neighbor program, so I'm all about neighbors. Your neighbor. Our neighbor had a tree fall over that is now leaning in our yard. At risk is our shed, our fence, and our kids' playhouse, as is currently pretty well wedged in another tree, so not a huge risk of falling down immediately. Okay? So you can see the tree, and if you shut your eyes... You can see the tree is now... I see it. Okay. We did ask them to take care of it, though. We are very friendly. We're friendly with our neighbor. The other day, my neighbor said that he had a crew scheduled, but he was waiting on them to be insured for the job because of their need to access our property today. Mm. Today, they showed up, and the neighbor's wife called. The crew didn't get the insurance that they were supposed to, and she asked if they could still come on our property. Mm. I flatly said no, no insurance, no access. If they could, if 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 they could, all the work. I don't know what that part means. It's spelled wrong. Um, <clears throat> if they could do all the work from the neighbor's property, have at it. Am I being reasonable? Is there anything I should be cautious of when they show back up, assuming they come back? Is there a good way to validate insurance? Yeah, they can supply you with a certificate of insurance. How do you know that's a- authentic? You get it on the internet. You get it on the internet. I mean, but the the big point is, is that she is absolutely reasonable because if one of those workers get injured, they could actually claim a home, uh, you know, workman's comp claim against your homeowners because it's your property. So I think she's absolutely reasonable. So now do you just wait and wait and wait? Well, this no, tree is you, now over in their the reason, yard. The, where's the neighbor? The neighbor, it's got to wait for somebody to get insurance. There's a thousand tree trimmers out there. Yeah, well, I, you know, I might be getting a different tree trimmer. 
if well, you don't have but they're going to have exactly to have right. You got to have workman's comp insurance. You, that's the minimum. You know that happened to a friend of mine. He had a tree company, and a guy fell out of the tree and ended up dying. <gasps> Oh. And paper does not refuse ink. Everybody and gets so, sued. So what Homeowner, happened? So the person died. My and friend then... just drug his body out to the street. <laughs> and Pat, so that was it. Now, that was pretty insensitive. You had a good story going No, there. he actually, uh, no, they, he went to the hospital, but later died. Oh, my goodness. So. Was there a lawsuit? Do you know? No. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. It's just everything I think that'd be really be unusual. Printed and look authentic. So this company now knows, you know, I need insurance. I'm, I'm not getting the insurance. This people want them to do the tree work. So I guess to validate, you, you just have a lot of work to do to make sure it's authentic. First of all, it's not her. She is not the issue. The issue is, and I'll just say it: the cheapskate homeowner who's going on the cheap and getting well, somebody without insurance. Now, Denny, let's be fair. I'm being fair. Not everyone can afford the very best of the best, right? No, you don't have to have the best of the best. But if you're going to be in business and tree trimming, especially, that you've got to have insurance. But, Pat. The, but let's give the neighbor credit because they're the ones that asked about insurance. Because when I have a contract, I generally don't. I don't either. I don't ask. You don't ask? No, because I use... Even painters, I Reputable for, people, and I, I assume I they do, but... I just use who Pat says. Yeah. <laughs> I just use who Pat says. No, I, I always ask for a certificate of insurance. Mm, no. C of I. C Here's of the I. thing. I have gone through my entire business life and... Uh, <laughs> Luckiest man Pretty much ever said, uh, it's all my fault. So generally... <laughs> I don't rely on anyone we call else. That, Pat, we call that marriage. Can I actually tell you a story without it? I don't want to mention any names, okay? okay? Good luck. This week, at our Keystone store, a tree fell. <gasps> oh, no. Not that beautiful old, old, old tree that I love so much. No. This is a tree. Terry has a way of making it you was feel not, guilty in a story. It was not <laughs> on my property, okay? Okay. The tree was not on my property. It was on another business property. But two people came from the neighborhood and said, hey, there's a tree that has fallen. It's it's either on your property or the other business property, but, you know, it, it could fall. So it was on the other business, their property. Mm-hmm. And so we went and said, hey, and they they couldn't see it because there's, there's a wall. So they didn't see on the other side of it. And they very quickly responded, that's not our property. Oh, uh-oh. And it's like, what do you mean it's not your property? Who the hell's property is it? <laughs> so I had the tree taken down you, off their property. Because you didn't want it, you needed Because it the neighbors and- wanted it done, and I can't disappoint the neighborhood. These yahoos were not going to take care of their own property, so I paid oh, to have man. it taken down. And that's a fortune. And during the break, when I tell you who it is, Denny, you will not believe it. <gasps> because it's somebody you wouldn't expect. That's right? exactly right. Oh, man. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> What's it rhyme with? <laughs> Erd. <laughs> Erd? Yeah. Erd. It's Turd National. <laughs> what? Let's stop asking questions. Somebody's going to get in trouble here. <laughs> take a phone call. Take a break. Let's do oh, something else. We got to move question. on. Hey, Debbie joins us. One. Hi, Debbie. Debbie, welcome to the Home and Garden Hi. Show. I'm going to try to get you out of trouble here. Thank, Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> hey, I have a Rose of Sharon that we've lived in our home for over 40 years. It's been there forever. It's very, it's it's, a, it's as high as our garage, but it's getting kind of way out. Branches cross it over. It's the beginning of neighbors. It's crossing over into their area. When can I trim it? What can I expect <laughs> after it's trimmed? You can't um, kill it. it. D- Debbie, you cannot you kill, kill it. You cannot. Okay. <laughs> now, Pat, the best time to trim a Rosa Sharon? Uh, it really, Rosa Sharon, we generally, it's because it blooms after May the th- or uh, June the 30th, we would prune it uh, back in the spring. So okay. really, I would tell you this, when it's, uh, when it's done blooming, chop it up. I mean, and you can you oh. can get aggressive on it, and it won't mind because be, behind the right. yucca, it is. Uh, I don't think that one has ever died. They're, even in nuclear oh. nuclear yeah. disaster, That's there right. will be a Rosa, Rosa Sharon. Sharon. I had one that okay. actually split in half. 
Oh, really? Split in half and cut it, and, it, and it's beautiful. Yeah. So help me God, <laughs> I mean, if you start talking I mean, about insurance amazing. and neighbors, Debbie got us out of this one. <laughs> she sure did. Yeah. Rosa Sharon. Thanks, Deb. Thanks. Yeah. They're beautiful. Oh boy, here's Matt. We got we got some. What's What's great about Rosa Sharon too is that there's so many new varieties that they're smaller ones. Before they could be kind of weedy. But uh, some of the newer varieties can stay small and are very, very beautiful. Uh, Matt joins us on the program. Hey, Matt. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I've got a question. Uh, sounds like mainly for Denny. I, I'm getting the notion that Pat just uses whoever um, That's right. to do some work. <laughs> That's right. Because but... it's all my fault, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But um, my, my question is, so I'm a flight academy student at a local flight uh, school and I've been doing some yard work and gutter cleaning and pressure washing. I, I just want to know what kind of insurance should I get, if any? You might want to get some basic business liability insurance. Depending okay. on your net worth, you might also want to get an umbrella an umbrella policy, your your liability insurance will take you up to certain limits. Matt, I'll just get you a copy of mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's not as expensive as you might think as long as you can demonstrate that you are a viable business. Now, are you doing it as a sole practitioner or do you actually have a company? Um, right now, it's just myself. My goal would be eventually to create something where where fellow flight students would be able to okay. do the same kind of work. I would start um, with your whoever is covering your homeowner's insurance because that's what it's going to go back on uh, to see if your general liability is where it should be. But talk to your homeowner's insurance agent. Um, don't talk to the company. Talk to the agent and say, what do you recommend here because I'm doing this on the side. Okay, awesome. I appreciate it. You bet, Matt. Hey, good Matt. Luck, good luck with the flying. Hey, Matt, to protect Thank yourself, you, to protect yourself, uh, when you go to a customer, don't speak English. <laughs> oh, what? Come I on. can't what? believe you said that on I air. Would, I would, so it's bad. just a way to uh, just move along. Protect, please, because they'll never you know, find the you. The thing is, Pat, I look like somebody who wouldn't speak English, so oh it might make sense. Ojalá que te pronto. Take care of yourself, buddy. Yeah, okay. I apologize. I, sh you I should not yeah. have said that. If, I hope he can do a crosswind land. Bring him back up. Oh, I want to ask him man. how he's doing on his crosswind landings. Oh, come on, bring him. Matt. How no, are you doing on your crosswind landings, sorry, Matt? Sorry, Matt. You know, Denny, the the craziest one I've done so far. Um, I'm just stage two private, and I'm going all the way through multi. Um, okay. But the craziest craziest crosswind I've done so far is about an eleven crosswind component. Oh, and um, see, I got to get you in gyroplanes. Gyroplanes, we can take about a twenty oh, mile an hour yeah. on the cross. Oh, brother! And we just lay lay our our uh, our rotors right into it. You guys would dip your wing into it, but Matt, we we lay our rotors right into it. We can. Is, We're hey, tough Danny, guys. Is part Danny, of, you take, you take my number. Hunter. You take my number down and shoot me a text, and I'll buy lunch. I'll be there. Okay. All right. So, I'll get it. Well, I'll get the I'll get the phone number from uh, from uh, Land. I'll, I'll put you on hold. But uh, in flight school, do is there a segment where they talk about flying lawnmowers? <laughs> <laughs> Denny just said well, he's a tough guy. You know, the only time that you're flying a lawnmower is if you're nosediving. It's probably about the only time that you're going to mow a lawn with it. Mm, well, <laughs> wow. I guess, you haven't, probably about I guess right. you haven't been in a gyro yet. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Good luck. He's right. <laughs> See you, Matt. 239-9393. We're coming right back with more 93 WYBC. Summer getting warmer, tidal wave come across the Mexican border. Why back gallon is cheaper by the barrel, just don't get busted singing Christmas carols. That's us. That's hey, good morning. Welcome, Pat Sullivan, along with Denny Smith, Terry Stacy. Allison is on vacation. Jimmy is behind the board. And I just want to apologize for that last segment, for all of it. Landon and I were okay. shooting dice. We don't know what you're talking series. about. That's all. I'm, I was don't over here celebrating uh, National no. Toby Keith Day to all who I celebrate. was talking to Matthew, the pilot, and he and I have bonded. You know, oh, wow. He's fixed wing, and I'll talk yeah. slow for him, but we'll make it. He'll get uh, tired of you really quick. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just spit out some egg on the keyboard. <laughs> yeah, you are such a slob. <laughs> the rest of it's Hold in your on. teeth. Oh, I'm going to need a knife gross. to get this out of here. Oh, God. You're not uh, getting my knife. Okay, hold on. I got it, it is the Home and Garden Show. 
brought to you by the Michelis. He's going to make fun of me no matter what I say, the Michelis Corporation. All right, you got your Water, brushed. storms, fire, and wet basements. Life <laughs> happens, and then you bring it down to Michelis happens to help you through it. That's where you want, like, the you want to bring it down, the, the emotional, emotional bond. Yeah, you got it? Michelis okay. happens to help you through it. All right, uh, Sasha has put the uh, fried chicken article online and on social media and also tagged your show. Thank you, Sasha. Today is National Fried Chicken Day. You know, I was, also, I was uh, thinking of Root and Bone. We go in Root and Bone, and they have really good fried chicken. Where is well. that? It's at, uh, like, on college, like, 46. You know, forgive me, but when I go out, I, I rarely order the chicken unless I think I've done something wrong for the week. I don't order chicken out. I always go with, you know, steak or pork mm. or oh, something fried else. Chicken well, I don't think you want to order chicken unless people specialize in it. Okay. Right? Like they're no, yeah, chicken sandwiches, you remember fried chicken sandwiches have been a hot, hot, hot mm-hmm. item, and they never, it never really went away. People are still trying to get to find the best right. fried chicken sandwich. Yeah. But just fried chicken and mashed potatoes and chicken gravy and uh, maybe some corn and a biscuit. Hey, this tenderloin like trail that's going on in food. Hamilton and Madison bone. County. Mm. Those, this tenderloin trail is big deal. On Tuesdays, you yeah. can't get into a restaurant that's served on tenderloin. It's crazy. Yeah. Dulio Tools there in Carmel on Tuesday. We ended up going back on Wednesday. Jonah and I went on Wednesday. But the place was crazy. I mean, it's it's yeah. a great tenderloin. Don't get me wrong, and it's a special price. Yeah, Big Lug wow. has a, a big special Yeah. on uh, tenderloins. Can you take a grandson into Big Lug? Can you? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, Good family day. friendly. Okay. Uh, speaking of family friendly, Faber B. Window, George Faber joins us. George, uh, we were talking about the big news. And once again, uh, congratulations. Uh, you and Pam have sold the business. Yes, we have. We, uh, you know, we started the company uh, 40 years ago and been very fortunate over those 40 years working for uh, over 80,000 people in the state of Indiana. And uh, like a lot of family businesses, we, we've we developed a lot of great employees, have been with us 20, 30 years. And so we thought probably the best people to sell the company to was our own B window family of employees. That is really so we cool. Did That's really cool. Uh, we did an ESOP, which is an employee stock option plan. We're now the hundred employees in B window are now the owners of the company. Pam and I are going to continue to work in the company and be employees, but uh, they can, they've, they will continue on the tradition that we have of trying to deliver high quality products and service, and you know, Pat, yourself from having, uh, you know, with your store and what you do for the community, uh, we've tried to do a similar thing from our standpoint. Family businesses always deliver more value to the customer Amen than to that. Uh, any big box could ever think about doing. George, where'd and you get? So where, where did you get started? I remember you down off the Monon uh, there by Reese, um, the roofing people. And I remember sl- slipping in there to see you about something. And but where where did you start the business? We we our first the first place we we were was in the twenty four hundred block in Hallville uh, on West Michigan, and uh, we were there for two years. And then we moved to the uh, it was an old lumber yard at the time there on fifty second and uh, Winthrop, and uh, and then we uh, tore down the lumber buildings and built a new building and. And we were there for um, we were there for 25 years, and uh, and then we moved to up to Allisonville and 116th, just south of there, pretty much right across from from uh, Allisonville Nursery. That's operation, and uh, and we've been up there now for uh, 11 years, and so we're uh, we we've been very blessed uh, to have not not only. From a facility standpoint, but also, as you know, Danny, it's people that make a business. Absolutely. We just, now we just had great people uh, and longevity. It always helps. It's like an athletic team. You know, if you have a bunch of seniors, you typically are going to uh, be better than if you have a whole bunch of freshmen. And it's the same way in business. When you have continuity and people that are with you a long time and they understand the culture of what you're trying to deliver to the customer, you do a better job for your customer. And uh, we're excited. We'll continue to uh, give back to the community like we all have. Uh, thankful for what uh, 
what the community's done for us. And uh, so Kevin and I are excited about it and uh, to do that for moving forward in our life and for B Window. Well, there you go. George, thank you very much for joining us today. I will tell you, your cell phone is kind of going in and out, but I think we, I felt like we got the whole story. We got the most of it. And I, I can't believe it's only been 11 years since they've been uh, up in Fishers. So I feel like yeah, they, they've been gone for They might have Winthrop. stayed longer, but they found out these new neighbors across the street. You know, the place was bought out and it's been different. No, I'm ever talking since. about their place down on uh, Winthrop, oh. 52nd Win- Winthrop. I don't like remember them in Hawville. I remember yeah. the other two, but. Yeah. George, thanks very much. Uh, all the information, specials, uh, financing, everything is at bwindow.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is the time that we wait for each and every week. We gather around the radio, we gather around social media at Home and Garden Indiana because it is another edition of Craft Corner, an unsponsored segment. Shocking. We're getting closer to sponsorship. I will tell you that, Pat. I know. There's uh, something in the works. I know. It's big. This is going to be such a fun craft. You're filling in for Allison today. Yes, I am. I'm really excited. This is a very simple, easy, fun craft for the whole family, but mostly for kids because they're going to love this. Everybody loves to tie-dye, right? I mean, it's been a part of our... our never done it. Never have you tie-dyed? <laughs> nope. It's, 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 it takes more than what we're going to do, but this will give you the same effect. Basically, what you're going to need is Sharpies. You're going to need Sharpies of all different colors. Sharpies. You're going to need some uh, isoprop- isopropyl, isopropyl. Alcohol. Alcohol. 70% or higher. Woo! Okay. Isopropyl. It'd be hard to find 90%. You talk but 70% about a, will do. You can you find it at Meyer. Beach party right there. And you're going to have, and then you're going to, I preferred to get my alcohol in a spray bottle. What if they put that, like, like you had spray bottles on top of like your, your gym beam or your, you know? Wow. If it was a spray bottle on the just top. Spray so you could just carry the bottle around and just spray. give yourself a spray? Huh? I'll How ta- about that? I'll take a hit. <laughs> ah. A spray bottle. But you're gonna I like the spray bottle. If you don't, you're gonna need a spray bottle or a dropper, an eyedropper, uh, for your alcohol. And then you're just gonna go to your hobby lobby or your Michaels or wherever you get your, your crafts, and you're just gonna buy a dollar ninety nine visors and store. hats. Well, you would love it. it said, you love the things. The last like craft that. store I was in was Ed Shocks. <gasps> The guy that painted cars? No, that was Toy and Hobby. Uh, Ed Shocks was a toy. I didn't know about that. I remember. Didn't I thought he was the ninety nine dollar painter car guy? That's Earl Shive. Oh. (laughs) All right. So we got Laura Lego, and she says this is my favorite non sponsor. Ninety nine dollars. Yeah. Sonia came in. Kim Craven says hello. Oh, hi everybody. Thank you for coming today. Okay. Look how nice Pat looks today on camera. I mean, isn't he a handsome man? Hi everyone. Look, get close to him. Look, give him. Wait a minute. He's he looks uglier good. than a mud fence. I like when he wears a hat. No, I hate when the cameraman talks. I do too. And it's not appropriate and it's not in his contract. He needs to but shut his pie. You're going to buy a little, go to your hobby store, a hobby store, your craft store, and you're going to get just your plain white visors or your hats or your t-shirts or your tennis shoes. In this case, we have some slip-ons. We do. They're, uh, they're toddler size, 910, right. which I think might be the size of my little elbow. There's just three. These are just like three dollars. I mean, they're very $3? inexpensive, right? And then you are. Go- we're going to tie dye them the using our sharp, sharpie markers. So, Pat, you're going to take your Where markers, these come from? any color that you want. Those came from Hobby Lobby. Yeah, China. Uh, China. Oh, yeah, made in China for sure. Well, what are you going to do? Sonia Childers Hook says, "All dressed up and nowhere to go." Hey, Pat. <laughs> So Thank mean. you, Sonia. I think, I think they Pat love, Cooper I think says, they great like summer craft. Boy, the right. comments are coming in in the stars. Uh, Thank yeah. you all so much for watching. So you're going to get your, you're going to get your, Pat, you're going to take your markers, your okay. Sharpies. <laughs> do I take all at one time? You can do all at one time, but you're basically oh, going to. come on, Pat. If you're going to make your granddaughter wear these, make them look good. Okay. You could put a I little name I, on them. You could, uh, but the kids too. The kids can grab a Sharpie and then they can just start, just start marking on the hats or the t-shirts or the tennis shoes, whatever it is that you brought so for them. So you're doing circles. I'm doing circles, but you could do diamonds. You could make a paint a horse. You could put their name on it. You could, mm. um, I know you like, um, you're quite an artist. Linda so. Ali says, good morning, guys. Hi, Linda. Oh, hi, Linda. Oh, I hope Linda, Linda, are you well? 
I hope everything's going well. She can't talk to me through this. Okay. Well, she could once like you, to drop us a line. Once oh, you maybe get Linda somebody, could have come in for a craft that Pat corner. Sullivan was left-handed. <laughs> what are you uh, making? Is that a little person? Yeah, it's a craft. Making... It's a. Oh, it's a stick good. man. You're making a stick, a man. stick man. Yeah. On the little chin of shoes. Yep. Uh, so, you know what? I find I, I never notice whether people are right or left-handed, but people notice all the time. They notice those things. What would bring that up? Because someone said, notice that I was left-handed. Oh, oh, I didn't thanks even for, notice it. Thanks for paying, <laughs> playing along. Once you get it all painted and colored with your Sharpie markers just how you want it, and this is the simple part, you're going to take your alcohol and you're just going to spray it. Spray it right here in my mouth. Spray it right there in Pat's mouth. But once you spray it, then it starts to, the colors start to bleed like you would if you were tie-dyeing. They start to bleed and they start to kind of melt all together. And you let it sit and it just gets better and better and better. Sp- I'm getting hit with alcohol. <laughs> Well, there's a there's a first. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I certainly meant nothing by it. Yes, Once you I get know that the done, microphone is black. I'm, you know what? I'm blocking gonna, Pat's I'm going to put my so. glasses on and use them as safety gear. And push oh, them really close to Oh, you know what? We really eyes. should have safety goggles when we. Oh, Pat! I love what you've done with the little the little person, the stick person. Very good. So yeah. you just continue to color them with your your sharpies. It's this is again, so his very granddaughter simple. can say she made them. And then. And then continue to spray yeah. the more you'd like it to bleed. Yeah, it looks like the work of a two-year-old. And <laughs> That's where I was going, Pat. Yeah. You picked but it right kids, up. The kids will like it. They'll have fun with it, and I really mean it. Once once it sits for a little bit, it starts to bleed more and more and yeah, more. Sonia gives, gives you a thumbs up because she says it's not as messy as tie-dye. Right. This is not as messy for tie, with tie-dye, and kids will really be able to all do right. this. Can I do mine now, please? Pat's sure. ready for a spray. Here you go. Okay. Yeah, Pat's got his spray Let bottle. Spray I David would like Wells. to say that Thanks you didn't do very you. much. <laughs> I mean, you just put a couple of drops in there. Well, I mean, a couple of a, little. I'm kind of a clean bean. <laughs> Pat's no spray. Oh, wait a minute. And... My mother would wash your mouth out with soap for lying like a clean bean. <laughs> well, look at Have this. Have you seen See? your oh, truck? Look. See, See it, it starts to bleed a there little is, bit. There is alcohol all over the table. It's, but it's good and it's clean and it's actually cleaning this office better, or the studio better than it's ever been clean. That's true. So it starts to bleed a little bit and the longer it sits, so the more it will bleed. I'm starting to smell uh, Jeff Pigeon. <laughs> The, Did the, you throw the, Jeff uh, under the, the bus? The alcohol has relief, <laughs> released. It's a combination of Steve Simpson and yeah. Jeff Pigeon. It you does smell it? Smell a little like Pigeon. If yeah. it was just some, some if if an old spice Lou added to it, it, it must have been buried into the. Uh, Lou the film wants to of know the... if you can do this on T-shirts. Could you do this on a white T-shirt? Absolutely. What I would recommend, though, is that you maybe put a piece of cardboard in between. You know, slide that in underneath the T-shirt or in between the layers of the oh, T-shirt. Oh, so it doesn't bleed. So it doesn't bleed through to the backside. But That's what I did with this sharpie, hat. Since it's a sharpie, you could then wash it, and it's not going to run anymore. It's not it won't run anymore. It. But the longer it sits, the more it does kind of bleed out. So it does. It doesn't take long to dry look at the hair on my little uh (laughs) my little stick figure it looks like they're getting electrocuted Ah! your little ella bell is gonna love this she's going to really be so happy what does she call you pat pat she's going to say pat (laughs) Pat, thank you really (laughs) let me have the markers Sonia Um, brings up a good point what are kendall and casey gonna say about the work workplace oh well what, you know listen. what? One, we don't care. No, this is not. They, two, they don't own the studio. Rob Kendall, you know what? We're going to go down one of these days. We're going to start punching it out. Yeah, or leg wrestling. He's always throwing the weekend people under the bus like like we're creating chaos. I know, like we're less than. Yeah. Don't pull his Sorry, hair. Sorry, Rob. Be careful of his hair when you do decide to go okay, after is him. is it time to wrap this one up? Yeah. Oh, Danny's tired of us. No, Let's go. No, I'm just saying that Pat's getting in the gutter, and I don't want to get in the gutter. Well, with Kendall? No, we're friends. Thank you, everybody. I hope I hope you enjoy this when it's fun for the whole family. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thanks for watching and listening to another episode of Craft, Craft Corner. Corners. Currently unsponsored. <laughs>
Hello. Hey, Patrick. Hi, Terry. Hi, Pat. This week, Pat, I had a uh, ongoing uh, pen pal in Jenny Green. I had lost my red bud, and she sent me a nice note. I'm and sorry. said, uh, you and Pat uh, know anything about red buds? Uh, she, she, her favorite tree was dying. It was a red bud just like mine. And I ended up, you know, I had to take mine down to the stump. But she ended up doing the same thing. She I'm went over sorry. to Allison and got a new red bud. But are you seeing things with red buds? Not really. Um, how big? How mature was yours? Uh, mine was mine was pretty good. Mine was about 20 foot tall and about 20 foot across. I'll see if I can send you a picture here of hers. Hers was just as big, but they died at the top, Pat. It was like they were getting strangled at the top, but when you scratch the wood on the on the main trunks, you're dying. I cut through hmm. and the heartwood was dead. I don't know. I mean, could I it be know. boards? Could it be a uh, girdled root? I can't Any believe of the stuff it's a that girl. would. Um, Both of them are ten or fifteen years old. I mean, these were beautiful trees. I mean, they even had the yeah. blue flowers. But anyway, you got a new sale from Jenny. Mm. Well, Jenny, I'm sorry we had to meet that way. I'm <laughs> sorry for your loss, but I'm excited to sell a tree. Yeah. Speaking of uh, trees, are on sale at Sullivan really? Hardware. I forgot to mention that in our advertisement. All the trees and shrubs, if you buy one, you get 10% off. If you buy three, you get 15% off. And if you buy six or more, you get 20% off. And if we install them for you, uh, if you buy three, we'll install the first one for free. Joe, so if you buy six, you get two installed for free. Jonas says if you buy that nine, if you, guys, you get three. Okay, have to okay. pay for Mr. six. Mr. Mathematics, we get it. Now, Jonas says, though, that if you plant them, there's a longer guarantee. That's right. Jonas is a smart kid. Okay. Uh, he, you get two years guarantee. Two years if ago. we install them. For those of you listening from home, Jonah's my grandson. He works yes. for Pat. He thinks he's funny. We, uh, <laughs> quite honestly, we what we find is that if we plant them, uh, they will last longer because we know that the green side goes up. And we get so uh, many people you have to insult that your... are plant stuff. I always tell people, green side up. Get people it. plant plants upside it's down all the time. Funny. The lady I was working with was Jenny Green. Oh, she planted her Jenny own Green and it looked beautiful. Uh, hi, Chris. Hi, how's it going? It's going Thank good. You guys for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So, so here is my issue. Uh, me and my wife. One of our things in the spring, summer, fall is go outside and watch the birds eat while we drink coffee. So this spring, we decided to actually build a dedicated bird feeding area. Um, we timbered it out, uh, put heavy black plastic down, and then put uh, white and black rocks on top. She planted a couple hostesses in it. We put the concrete bird bath. Come out perfect. What I didn't take into consideration was the drop seed from the feeders and so now I've got a whole bunch of just random green stuff growing in there <laughs> that I would be, if I tried to hand pick it, it would be an all day thing. And I don't know what I can use on it that won't kill her hostesses or most importantly, hurt the birds. Okay. So really quickly, there is a, uh, you can use a organic weed and grass killer that would be uh, pretty, I'd still follow the label instructions, but uh, you can use it on orga organic crops, et cetera, and it will kill weeds and grass. So that should take care of it. Then uh, on the same thing in an organic, you could get a preen, the purple label, which is a corn gluten, and then that would also that is also organic and safe for uh, animals and, and whatnot. So, and, and really, probably the other preens would do better, but read the label instructions and see what you think. Uh, thanks for the call. We appreciate it. Uh, we've got to run out of here. Hour number four is coming up. Our number, 239-9393. It's really good. It's sweet. It's Boy, so like a well-oiled so machine. Smooth. You see those reflections? <laughs> we'll get Man, better in the fourth hour. Yeah. I think he's got high jumping in his Oh, this career. is the fourth hour. Yeah, this yeah. is it. Make it a good one. Yeah. About time for regular Jeff to call back. He's already Talk to live, regular he, Jeff. He's, he's saving it for the speed round. Oh, is he saving it for the speed round? What's he calling? Power tools, power tools, power tools. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, Pat Sullivan, Denny Smith, Terry Stacy, Allison is on vacation. Yeah, I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Vacay with the family. She, she's, you know, she keeps that close to the vest. We never really know where she is. Never know. 
It's usually a wedding. She's young. Uh, she could be anywhere. Our number, 239-9393. Uh, Jimmy is behind the board. Hey. Uh, we're going to be here till 12 o'clock. Remember, the Fever play. No, we're going to be here till 1 o'clock. At 1 o'clock. I'm sorry. The Fever play at 1 o'clock. And if you want to watch it, it is on uh, our local CBS affiliate. So we've got that going for us. It is funny how we... I, Caitlin Clark, let's face it. I mean, she's made us all interested in WNBA yeah. basketball. Truly. Her passing is just... She's an amazing athlete. My I, gosh. So just wa- I can just watch her. I mean, her assists. Did yeah. you see her? She was in a little bit of a tete-a-tete with uh, the Chicago... I think it was the Chicago Center... She threw the ball up in the air, and then she saw that the ball was come come down, hit the girl. I saw head, that, and she knocked it out of the way. I yeah. thought, you know, that was pretty cool. But the thing, the story of that is, the girl thought that she was doing something and was, was ready to pick a fight. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. later she went. Somebody saw her. It's like, ah, she was trying to keep a ball from hitting you in the head. Yeah. But so she went. She apologized to her. Yeah. She or did. some. That's so, what to that effect. Something. Yeah. That so or she's. Or she said. Or she said. You ever do that again? I'll kill you. <laughs> If you ever do that You're again, not. I'm going to get Wes's grandfather. Oh, boy, <laughs> they are tough, and yeah, she's all, and she also now is a part of the uh, the All Star. Yeah, as a as a fan favorite. So, do you have a thought about why she wasn't on the Olympics, Pat? Or I do. Oh, Pat. Terry, I'm sorry, Terry. I was looking at you and saying, Pat. Yeah. Uh, I believe. I think it's because well, there's several different there were several different theories, um, and whatever those theories may be. It's okay. She's young. She's going to make it. She'll be I there. think it's fair to say she's new. She's I don't new I don't see that as such. Yeah, you know, she's been through a lot, you know, immediately she didn't play she was playing college ball just a couple months ago yeah. and here she is and uh, she's having a great time, I think, and I think she'll be okay for I next think time. I mean, it would have been it would have been good for women for yeah. for she, the yeah. uh, sport in the Olympics. But they can wait another four years okay. for that. She's we'll just see. a class act, the way she responds. Landon and plus, you? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut in. But, like, there is a girl, I think, that's still in college. Her name's Haley Van Lith. I want to say she plays for TCU now. She's on the Olympic roster. <gasps> what? I believe so. I could be wrong. I could be wrong in some way, well, shape, or form. But no, I believe that might change my mind. Yeah, that might change my mind. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, are fighting words. We were talking right. about We need to get the Kentuckian there. back in here and see what he has to say. Wes! So, in the voting for the All-Star team in the WNBA... Last year, the top players received, uh, I believe it was like something like in the range of fifty to 70,000 votes. Caitlin Clark and the top level of people received 700,000 votes. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> uh, God I bless mean, her. Make, I can't imagine like her life. But she's not like, a butthead. She's, doing she's right now, very nice you know? person. I just she love really that. Is. She really is. She's be very down to earth and she's tough. She was tough in college, you know, so... Oh, she, anyway. she, and she knows when to keep her mouth shut. She does. Oh, She's learning. It's Christy Sides, the coach, that I also think about, too, as to what this has been on her. Yeah. Because everybody's watching her like crazy, too. And I just looked at this up. Haley Van Lith is on the Olympic roster. And she's a college kid. Yeah, she goes to TCU. She must be awesome. Wow. Uh, oh, she, she was a good one against uh, Caitlin. Like, she was a good rival. Like you get a, you get a good rival like Haley Van Lith, and you get one that's just thinks that she's just as good as Caitlyn, like Angel Reese. But that's neither here nor there. Wow! Boy, you just threw some pepper on this, wow. this pizza here. I'm sorry, I do not like Angel Reese. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah, no. I'm not a fan. Uh, yesterday, uh, I was told I had a phone oh, call. So he's, I think he's still reading. He's still reading. Uh, I have read Nigel's script. No, no, no. This is actually. Is this your own script? Yeah, this is just. Yeah. You know. I thought it was Wait a minute, job. wait a minute. I just thought we had exhausted Terry, this. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry, there's a stick figure on the Pat WNBA Sullivan thing. has never done a script on this show in his life. Well, it's life. kind of fun when you find other show scripts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, yesterday. Well, actually, I, I do have something from Hammer and Nigel, but this one, I it was just a little a little ditty about our show, and I was uh, someone said, hey, someone's on the phone for you. They listen to you on the radio. So I picked up the phone. They had a long question about removing rust from a fiberglass tub and what product you can use and i recommend it wink w-h-i-n-k uh there's a certain one that is okay for plastics and i thought that would be good and i got got back on the phone told him and he goes does a home depot have that (laughs) oh are you kidding me and i i said well i'm not sure i don't shop at the home depot i just shop here he goes oh i'm sorry he goes i'm in ohio (laughs) 
<laughs> he oh. goes, I listen to your oh, to your okay. show, but I live in Ohio. Okay. Well, now, Steve, I said, he's okay. Saved, he's that that. I said, better. well, that's okay. <laughs> So. Well, at least you didn't hang up on him and call him a rotten SOB. No, I'm, I'm pretty easy about that. It was just so how he came right out. Like, oh, hey, man. can I get that at the Home Depot? That's it's funny. like, well, hey, thanks a lot. I just spent five minutes with you. What I like is the people that come in and they see the label and they start taking a picture of it. And you can just see them sorting on their phone trying to find out where else they can find it. Those are the really great customers. I yeah. like that. That was a good story. Yeah. Um, how long have you two worked together? 18 years. Has it been 18 years? Long Are you, enough. You, Longer than most marriages. Would you say that you're friends? Yes. I mean, really on and off the yeah. court? Yeah. He, he's tested the friendship There's a times. new study yeah. that's been published, <laughs> and it says that we bond because of our body odor. Like, your body odor, Pat, is similar to Denny's body odor, and that's why you guys get along so well. Who Weird, because you can wait, smell wait it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who you said, you first smell. of all, who said we get along? And second of all, if you're telling me I smell like that old salmon, you know what? Maybe it's because oh my God. maybe it's because we shower together before the show. We do not shower oh, together down in the men's locker room. Paul, oh. it's interesting. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's not like that's, you smell each other. He's like still dogs, mad because but... I took him to the lady that uses the waxer to, to get the hair off his back, and he's still mad about that. That was 16 years ago, and he's still mad about that. Sounds like somebody. <laughs> it cost some me anger. thirty dollars. And you didn't even say thank you. I just think it's interesting because you do, off the air, everybody, if you don't know, I mean, they really are really good friends. And uh, this just came out about groups that that bond together, your friends, all in general, who you're attracted to. It's about your body odor. Terry, I'm you not don't sure smell I believe it. That. You don't smell it necessarily. It's just a You've chemistry. You've got to stop of reading those magazines odor. in the checkout counter at the grocery this store. This is real science. Oh this no, is no, real no, 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 it's the thing that's happening right now. The two of you are buddies. So you know what you so you and Beth, you and Beth obviously bond because you two have very similar body odors. Wait a minute. Now you say I smell like Beth? No. If is A that, equals B and B this, equals C, a then A equals C. Is this how we end up with the five kids? Wait a minute. Yes. I got nothing to do with because that. It was all the body odor? Right. Yeah. You have a natural attraction to each other because of your body odor. <laughs> Oh, Beth is going to be really happy to, to learn this. Wait till she finds out we're cousins. Oh, yeah. my. That's going to go good. I'm an Anstey, you know. Hey, uh, in other news, Jared Fogle. <laughs> this is from Amber and Nigel's script. I'm telling you, he's getting it from that script. <laughs> the disgraced former sub, uh, Subway spokesperson, uh, currently serving time in jail, uh, is making his spending his days making sandwiches in prison, according to a... New York Post report. The 46-year-old pitchman was sentenced to over 15 years in 2015 after he pleaded guilty to possessing... Uh-oh. Uh, Fogel worked in the kitchen at FCI Inglewood uh, in Colorado when he first arrived to begin his sentence, making and distributing lunches for his fellow inmates, according to the New York Post. He then rotated around to several other jobs in the prison, including groundskeeping and janitorial work before recently returning to his kitchen gig. You're stealing their content. Hammer well, I didn't Nigel steal put the, in. They don't have the jokes that went along with this. I just. Oh. Yeah. He just, he just I have so many jokes in the chamber, but I don't think they're clean. Yeah. I don't even like to say why he's in jail. No. Uh, makes it. Brings he back. should be in there twice as long. How about we say that? A woman in Tennessee got arrested after she was <laughs> caught with bags of meth, LSD, fentanyl, and other drugs, all disguised to look like Taco Bell burritos. Oh, my God. Are you Sounds kidding? like a good time to me. Now, the thing I would question on this is she should specialize in one thing. I think when you get into too much thing and you get too broad with your inventory, you, get the wrong you got meth, LSD, fentanyl, and other drugs. And I just think that's a lot. I think you should go to market uh, with just maybe a couple, LSD and fentanyl or something like that. Well, when you get a burrito all wrapped up, don't they all look the same? Yeah, I guess so. All yeah. disguised to look like Taco Bell burritos. Mm. I don't understand fentanyl from a business standpoint. Can I tell you why? Why? It is so fatal, correct? It yes. is killing people all over this country. If you were a drug dealer... Why do you want to kill your customer? I don't understand that either. I really don't. I really don't. And, and I'm don't. saying that in a, a way, it's like, why would anyone... Why do you think a drug dealer knows about the dosing of a, 
of a drug like that. That's a they pain say that fentanyl is fentanyl. A, they say you can take microscopic amounts and it can be enough to kill you. But I think from what I also have heard is that it, the high is so incredible that if you you get up to that line of near death and you can't and you and you you want more of that. To get to yeah. that line. Wait, wait a Same minute. Didn't thing. we start this this whole quarter hour gig talking about how Pat stinks? Oh, about his body odor? Yeah. I don't know, but I do have another neighbor. A question. bank robber in Florida walked into a Chase branch the other okay. day and demanded one cent. He told the cops he did it because he wanted to be arrested. Would they arrest him for one cent or would they just kick him in the butt and say, get out of here? Crazy. I think I'd, if I were the bank manager, I'd give him the, the penny and say, get the hell out of here. We've Try harder, dude. Minds. We've all lost your minds. Jeff You're joins us make... on the program. Hi, Jeff. Hey, good. Jeff's there. Hey, I had to call back. Danny, I apologize to you because I love you with all my heart. You're one of the most sweetest persons I've ever met in my life. It's because Liar. we smell alike. No, no. Jeff and I smell that. alike. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I only like you because your daughter. I think your daughter is really cool. That's creepy. That's not yeah. creepy. She's a class lady. Creepy. She saves her dad that from is, disaster that after disaster. That's kind of weird. Terry, I love you because I remember listening to you. When did you start there when you were like eight or nine years old? Yeah. I've been listening since 1969. Oh, I've That's probably been listening that long too. Years. Yeah, we're close in age. We're we're on the 54 same. Fifty-four years. Yeah. All right, now yeah. you have you've left out Pat. Pat's over here. Hold with on, he's got, he's got a whole list there. I'm I mean, sure. Pat is just like me. He's a sarcastic business owner that makes the show because he can be a smart aleck just like I can. But he loves people, and I love Pat. Uh, Pat loves people. Oh. Wait a minute. I do. I'm a. I'm a people person. You really yeah. are. Yep. Always have been. Yep. <laughs> okay, Jeff. I never get to talk to you guys for more than a few minutes because I always think my time's up when I got to go. Yeah, so you tell your gonna... daughter, this is why we hang up on you. Okay. Jeff, Amen. you take as much time as you'd like. <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Oh, I think that's <laughs> Who is the real Jeff? Yeah. Uh, you got He's any tattoos? Well, I'm a, God, I'm a God-fearing man who respects everything that you've done for your communities that, that i have used many of the people that you advertise on your station i've been an avid listener since i was eight or nine years old wow the wibc that's coming on 54 years wow that is amazing so listen to me all oh, everybody on the program i listen to it all day long as long as i can I respect your show. I respect what you guys do for the community. And that's where I'm coming from. I never get a chance to tell you the guys how I really mean it and how we're all family. So oh, that's right. Gosh, Jeff. I think that's Thank awesome. you, Jeff. Nice. Jeff is you know, Jeff, that was so nice <laughs> that I'm going to take the smart, you know what, Alec uh, response, I, and I'm not going to say it. Just because that was so heartfelt. Yeah. You know, he's kind of like, and I wish we would have this. Again, I've thrown this out before. He's like listener of the year. Yep. We need to have listeners of the year that have can, can take a test, he's like get a, a citizen's trophy. test. And that, it would be like a WIBC test. And we would ask him certain questions about right. certain things. And, and he would be, and devoted, oh my gosh, all these years, he should be listener of the year. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeff. You. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. See you, buddy. I bet he knows pick a pocket. I bet, I bet All right, he does. we're coming right back. Uh, our number two three nine ninety three ninety three. And I hope I didn't start up. Why? Why don't? Why can't I just shut up sometimes? Are you in trouble? Out, out of the Probably. mouths of babes. Coming right back. Ninety three WIBC. We smell the same, Pat. Yes, we do. That's, That's what Terry I'm, tells me. That's why I love you so much. Now, come on. Don't be saying that on 50,000 watts. Do you hear Hamill say, Hammer say that about Nigel? Do you, see, do you hear Casey say that about... Th that's because those other people aren't in love like we are. 
We are not in love. Trust me. 18 are... years, yeah. I know. I think you might be in love. That's like forced labor. I mean, they do that you in Russia what? to people all the time to punish them. Terry, we've mm. gotten to the point where we finish each other's sentences. Oh, we really that's do. That's true love. Yep. Let's try this one. Why don't you go pound sand up? Up the river. Up the river. <laughs> I was going to say that one. I How about knew. this one? Why don't you stuff it in your... In your lunch sack. In your lunch sack. You're really? close. Is that what you have picked? Yeah. You're close. I don't smell like either one of you. I can tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, my wife's I'm listening. I'm just here for crap. Okay. I think my mom's listening. Okay, She's everybody. All Let's right. just settle down. Let's talk to Bill, and he is going to break the, the cycle we're in. Okay. Hi, Bill. Hey, how are you? Good. Uh, I've got a uh, Weber Genesis 2, and uh, I tried to light it the other day, and I was getting very, uh, uh, very small flame. So I thought, well, this, it must be empty. I took it off, weighed it, and it's 30 pounds. Okay. So which, means you have tw- which means you have 12 pounds of propane in there. Uh, there's a little a part of the, uh, the overfill, uh, the OPD valve on those okay. that they they will when it, when a grill goes to 250 degrees you need to reset the tank so you undo it uh let's see you you take the i may get this a little bit wrong and i'm sure it's on the weber it's just propane and could explode in his face there, don't uh, worry pat yeah okay light a cigarette oh no gosh. no that's not no. it no that's no. after wait no. a minute no just that's some gasoline that's in step it, really. 12 how to reset <laughs> Shut the tank off, undo the hose, open all the, the valves up. On the grill. On the grill. Then you re- hook the t- uh, tank back up, turn it on, let it run a few seconds, shut it off, and then try to relight it. Yeah. Remember, the, the gas grill lid is always open when you're, when you're trying to light it. It's like a vacuum lock on a pump. You know, they can get pressure locked for the, all the wrong reasons, but you've got to burp oh. the system. So... If I have, uh, but that's the problem. Now I may have screwed up one step or the other. But you want to, you want to get burn control. Uh, to get the phone number quick and have your wife stand by with a cell phone. Okay. Wow, this is all I'll really scary. Yeah, I know. So when he does, so he he removes, he turn, he unplugs the tank. Yeah. Yep. Forget right? the forget the cigarette, Bill. We were just kidding on the cigarette. Shut it off. Sh- disconnect it. Disconnect it. Should your turn the valves all the way on. Terms, but they have been off, right? Yeah, but that burps okay. the system. That takes the pressure off the system beyond where the tank connected. Okay. Very good. And I uh, I did uh, subsequently, since I thought it was there was something wrong, I put a new tank on, uh, a full tank, and it lit up just fine. So Yeah, it's just uh, that one I'm tank. Gonna switch, I'm going to switch them out again and see if that uh, helps. Yeah, it should because you've taken it off. So I would guess that it's probably will be fine. But it's just the it's just the OPD valve on the actual tank. Very good. Okay, thanks, Thank Bill. You. OPD, overfill Overpressure. protection device. See, we finished our each other's sentence. Wow! Don't, don't point at wow. me like that. I don't want to be hold like on. you. Hold on. I don't even want to be associated with you. <laughs> Are you sniffing him? Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, well, get away from me. <laughs> You know who knows odors? Zach Klein from the Michelis Corporation. <laughs> Poor Zach. Zach, you've been drug into something you don't want to be near. That's that's what it sounds like. How are you guys doing today? We're was, doing good. I was all right till Terry brought up that Pat and I like each other. Because you the way <laughs> yeah, they smell. I, I heard that. I was like, that's, uh, that's a little strange. 18 years, huh? 18 years of wedded bliss. <sighs> wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we vacation that's together. Awesome. I mean, it's like... We don't vacation together. I don't want to be seen with you. He's so feisty. That's what I love about him. I know. Zach probably understands because, Zach, do you, don't you have the people that you work with? Aren't there some that you're just more drawn to that you just work better with? That smell like you? That smell like you. I mean, yeah, I would say so. You know, I think we're all big, one big happy family. But, you know, there are, you know, it's just like brothers and sisters. I mean, you know, you all love each other, but there's that one brother where you're just like, man, I really like him more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was going to say there's yeah. that one brother I just want to beat yep. the snot out of. Absolutely. Yeah. His chemical makeup is like yours. So yeah. you both have the same kind of odor. Yeah. His chemical makeup hasn't... Look at us. Do we look alike? Your chemical. What's inside Danny of Danny DeVito you? and Arnold Not Schwarzenegger. Do look. we look like twins? Your inner. Your inner chemical. That's right. Zach, tell, talk to us about Michelis. 
Denny's oh, in man. denial. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, it's it's really crazy. We've actually had a couple big commercial water losses this past week. So been pretty good in terms of business. But I'll tell you what, if there's one thing that business owners should be keeping an eye out for, it's it's leaking roofs and things like that with all that water that we just had. You know, that is really important. It's really easy to find that stuff in your house. You know, you it's like you know your house, like the back of your hand. Uh, but, you know, in a big business, and a big structure, it can be really hard to see those tiny spots where water is leaking in from the roof or, you know, coming down your drywall and things like that. So I would say that's really one of the biggest things we're seeing this week, which is really, really interesting. We didn't get that much rain, but I feel like we got enough to where it, it did cause some damage in some of these old buildings, especially in downtown Indianapolis. Yeah, so. Zach, that uh, one, uh, it has to be the same one. We must have gotten... And I know it was real localized, but we must have got, I swear we got two or three inches in an hour's time. I mean, we had yeah. roof leaks that we've never had before, ever. And it, it's just wild how that works. Huh? It's, it's like it takes, it takes years to develop, but then it just takes that one rain that's not even that much, really. You know, three inches of water isn't compared to what we've had before. Um, you know, but just, just three inches of water, two inches of water can just cause it to... To push right over and know? it just couldn't it, it's like the water couldn't get off the roof fast enough and it you know water travels to the path of least resistance and then all of a sudden it's it's in the building absolutely that, that's really all it takes too it's crazy it's it's uh i learned a lot coming into this business you know <laughs> for sure i bet you did i bet you did well you guys do a great job and we're always glad to uh have your support and uh we sent we'll send people uh, your way how about that Absolutely. Yeah. No, we'd appreciate that. And, and definitely if, if anybody has any problems or even any questions, you know, feel free to call the office and just just ask questions. You know, we're here to help in any way, even outside of coming and, and estimating your home or your business. You know, just call and ask questions. We're happy to answer. Them. I remember when a couple of the guys came over to babysit our grandkids. It was so nice. Beth and I got to go out to dinner. And is that really what happened? Yeah. That's and cool. they taught they taught them all the older kids about water extraction. Wow. Yeah. That's the house really... of 700 fans. Yeah. There you go. See you, Zach. All right. Take... Oh, the number. Oh. Jimmy cut him off. 844 Fix Indy is the number. That's 844 Fix Indy. Water storms, fire, and wet basements. Life happens. Michelis just happens to help you through it. That, so let's change that girl let's go put some miles on it back of the chevy with the engine running just you and me in a truck bed wide like a california king we could break it in if you know what i mean put some miles on it back of the chevy with the engine running just you and me in a truck bed Betty joins us here on the Home and Garden Show. Betty, thanks for listening. Hi, Betty. Hi. I've been listening to you since 1958. Oh, my. I, uh, we moved in, in Indianapolis in, in 1958, and I was a stay-at-home mother, and WIBC was on the, on the radio all day long. That's 66 years ago, Betty. I know. Wow. I'm fi- we we stayed lived in Indianapolis for fifty years, and moved back to be with my sister fourteen years ago. And I listened to you every Saturday morning on uh, uh, iHeartRadio. Oh, that's so fun! How, where do you live now? New Brownfields, Texas. I'll be darned! You're listening to us from. Hey, are you getting ready for barrel? Is it coming your way? Uh, we'll probably get some rain, but I've got a, uh, a, a niece that passed away last week, and the funeral is this morning in Rockport. Oh. So I'm worried about my family that's gone down there. Oh. I'm 91. You don't sound 91, no, Betty. No, you don't. You sound way better well, than Denny. That was <laughs> He really loves me, Betty, but he has to talk mean in front of other people. Yeah. That's the way he is. I've been to turkey fest and to the state fair mm. and to the garden shows 
and seeing all of you guys. Oh, that's well, next so time, sweet. Next time you, you see us, stop. just say, I'm Betty from Brownsville, Texas. I just wanted to say, hey, no, is that way no, we can put it? No, no, New Brownsville. Oh, New Brown. Okay, I'm sorry. He's sorry. not very and, smart. And I, I, I won't be, co- move, be get down there again. Okay. <laughs> well, well, I tell you what, then. You just call us every once in a while, okay? Okay. Well, good to talk to hey, you. Right. you have, do you have any cattle, Betty? Do you have cattle there at the house? No, I... I live in, uh, in India in in uh, independent living. Independent living. I have my own cottage and still do my own cooking. That's I'm not amazing. driving anymore. Way to go, Betty! Way to go. It's, really cool. It's a, it's a good place. Well, keep going. Be thanks, as strong Betty. as you can yeah. be. Thanks for listening to okay. all these years. Yeah, and thanks for calling yeah. us. And I remember when. Uh, Terry started. <laughs> I, you know, that was a long time ago. You got a good. I mean, yeah. you, your memory is amazing. But yeah, oh, a yeah. long time and ago. I saw you. Uh, I saw you once at a uh, when you you were collecting for the Salvation Army. <laughs> oh, you're a keeper, Betty. Yes, Thank you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Bless your oh, heart. Right. Take okay. care of yourself and call back again sometime. Okay. All right. Thank you. See you, Betty. All right, uh, 239-9393. We're coming right back. Are, am I supposed to do a quick break? Y- yes, sir. You did it 93 right. 93 WIBC. What started on a rain-chilled cold morning? Oh, that's Hammer and Nigel. Oh, there we go. What started at a little after 9 o'clock has come down to the final segment, the Speed Round, where we take your calls as quick as possible because we want to get the heck out of here. The Speed Round is brought to you by... Our buddies, Thompson Furniture and Mattress in Columbus. Great pricing on Lazy Boy, Indiana-made Smith Brothers Furniture, mattresses made in Indiana, maintenance-free outdoor furniture. Listen, free delivery up to 75 miles. Go to thompsonfurniture.net. <laughs> ready for the speed round. Let's go, boss. Let's go. They're down in Columbus, and uh, remember we had the nice comment? Yeah, we did. About uh, how great All Columbus is. Uh, Jed joins us on the program. Hey, Jed. Hey, question. Uh, when uh, 1950 built Bedford Stone House with a basement, after a hard rain, water comes in through the water supply line. It leaks around the supply line, comes through the foundation. Um trying to figure out how to fix that it's only in a heavy rain um your water table is coming up to the point of entry and i really you know pat has a, a product called hydroponic or quick set expanding cement i would try it with that uh, how deep is it is it four four foot below the 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 grade below the house yeah, I'd say three to four foot, yes. Hopefully you can do it from the inside, but Pat, that... that hydraulic st- cement? Hydraulic comes in a little tub. Yep. Yeah, I would try that first. Dries yet. in three to five minutes, so yeah. you don't mix up too much of but it. But you want to do it when it's dry, and you might want to chip around the pipe very, very carefully so you don't knock a hole in it, and then this hydroponics, it, it won't hurt the copper at all. Sure. Okay. And, and the idea uh, here is to push that water, uh, water traveling at the path of least resistance. You want to push it down so it gets picked up, hopefully, by the foundation drain. Okay. Plan B, if that doesn't work, I have to do it from the outside then, right? Dig yes, a hole? yes, sir. Hey, you guys are the best. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. See you, Jed. Up next, we have Brad joining us on the program. Where did the cursor go? Hey, Brad. Weekend was like a blast furnace. I missed you guys because I was at Brown County with my granddaughter and my son, her uncle, her her dad went to heaven a few years ago. Anyway, we ended up at the Nature Center, and it was so good. They got rattles, a rattlesnake, uh, copperhead, black rat snake, milk snake, turtles. But the honeybee hive is so cool this year because instead of being in the wall, they moved it out, and there's plexiglass on both sides, and you can sit on either side of it and watch sit. the bees work. Sit, I, sit, I, yeah. I just love our state parks and stuff. I just wanted to put a plug in them. That that's right. That's right there by. Uh, that's right there by Olga Lake, isn't it? I uh, by the campground in yeah. the camp office. Yeah, it, I love our state parks. I just oh, wanted to plug. There in. you go. Thank you, Brad. We appreciate that. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Russell joining us on the program. Hi, Russell. Hello, how are you guys? We're doing good, thanks. 
Hey, I had a question about creeping Charlie taking over my front lawn, mm. and it's like every year. How do you eradicate that? Well, the best time to do it will be in September when the movement in the plant starts to move down towards the root, and you'll want to use a product like Speed Zone or Weed Free Zone. And you want to get it when it's actively growing, so those nice, uh, you know, kind of uh, cool nights and warm days, and that weed killer. You'll you'll probably have to do it. See so if you'd start even late times. August, late August or early September, you could probably get in maybe three sprays before it gets okay. too cold. And uh, it, it, it can be really effective. The, the biggest problem is people use the wrong weed killer. They don't stay after it and they do it at the wrong time of the year. So Speed Zone and what was the other one? Speed Zone or Weed Free Zone. They're, they're two different companies, but really the same chemicals. The, the product, Pat, is Carfinisone? Yes. Carfinisone. Try to spell that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We have, uh, we got Luke joining us on the program. Hi, Luke. Hi, how are you guys? We're doing good. What I wanted to just quiz a little bit. If I mention the name Bouncin, does that ring a bell to anybody there? Yeah, the Bill. WIBC? Bouncin Bill. Bouncin Bill Bradley. Bill Baker. Yeah. Bouncin Bill, Bill Baker. Baker. Yep. I, I listen to this station since. Just after the war, uh, so it's it's a long time. Wow. WIBC is the top, any place I have lived. I always like to live within the area where I can pick up WIBC. That's cool. That is remember, so cool. Do you right. remember who did uh, pick a pocket? Yeah. Uh, um, well, I saw him at the Rochdale uh, Fair. Um, uh, you know, Terry Terry Stacy uh, picked it up where he left off. Was it uh, Jim Shelton? Jim, Jim. Shelton. But Pick Terry, how did Jim. that go for? Jim. Did you still have the same vest as he did? Uh, no, no, because that was actually trademarked. You couldn't use that kind of a thing. But anyway, it wasn't. It didn't go as well with a female wearing a coat and then you needing to be in different to, pockets of the coat. To be grabbing around. Wearing. Actually, I yeah. thought that would have gone so well. It went well for yeah. a, a while. Well, but, Luke, thanks yeah. for being a, such Thank a great you, listener to us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a age old. I'm in the mid eighties now, and I enjoy every minute of listening to the IBC. Well, thank, thank you, you very Luke. much, Luke. We we appreciate you listening, and uh, I wish you were the fifth caller because you would have won a prize. <laughs> but sure, yeah. Charles the Genius is no, going no, to in in this Happy show. Hour here, and Steph, God bless all the hope. Uh, uh, Allison's having a good vacation, and the Gold Fever Go. You mentioned the drugs a while ago. It reminded me of my, when I was a flower child back in the 70s, a blooming idiot. But anyway, ah. uh, no, it's terrible. But I've told people over the years two things. I used to be, well, I guess I better admit it. I used to be hooked on phonics when I was a kid. Imagine oh. how many people have no idea what I'm saying, but the other one make it real super quick. And this joke is from the 70s. Okay. You ready for this? Yes. They, they had invented, there was a rumor had it back in the 70s. There was a drug it was a combination of LSD and the pill. You could take a trip without the kids. Ah! <laughs> oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, is this thing on? Nope. No, no, not anymore. <laughs> See you, Charles. Oh. There you go. He hung up on himself. We didn't hang up on him. No, we, we hung up on him for sure. Oh, there he goes. Charles the genius. Yay! Oh. Now, we have our very own Charles the genius in studio. And, oh, uh, yeah. So yeah. we want now, you've heard Charles the Genius. Now listen to Charles Jr. Charles Jr., is that what we're going with? Well, hey, everybody. I mean, it's, good, it's good to be back in here. And, and God bless all the folks out in the uh, radio world. Hope Allison's having a great, uh, you know, vacation out there. And uh, so, you know, I, I totally lost my track. I thought yeah, I, I that was good. Where I was going that was with good. That. Right, that's all we needed. Just that a little very sample. Good. <laughs> So oh, good. good heavens. That was let me see. Let me see Hammer and Nigel do that that's one. Yeah. Good. And Charles, if you're listening, that is just a giant this I mean, is that is out of love. It is out of love, love and uh, respect. Because he did go to Ben Davis High School. That is very true. The greatest high school of all time is Charles Schwartz. Oh, Second, yeah, that's right. Is, uh, oh, yeah. That's what, number three, Western Ben. I just need uh, a little more information. Well, Mr. Sullivan, tell me. Jane just <laughs> texted me, telling me about this night in the garden thing. She says, "Oh yes, oh, yeah. thank Come you on, very tell much, me about that Jane. One more time, okay? Okay. Well, I have. Uh, looks like what's our out time? Fifty-nine fifty. Fifty-nine fifty. Fifty-nine fifty. Oh, this will be great. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm pitching underhand to a guy who can't swing. Take it slow. Brian Wilkes is sending me all kinds of stuff. Is he? Yeah, I don't think he's a bunch of stuff. 
Yeah, I don't think he's really was All right. that impressed with my... In the oh. evening at Sullivan Hardware, 71st and Keystone, they're going to have several different restaurants come in to That's do right. all these different type of meals and you can stay, you can get them all in one location. That's right. All on our grills, whether they can cook on a big green egg, a Traeger, a Weber, a Napoleon, uh, even the, I uh, imagine the Gosney pizza ovens might get a workout. But the, here's who we have lined up so far. Ambrosia. Good. Chilita, which is one of my favorites. I know That's, it. You know Chilita. We hang out there and try to kill yeah. the vibe. Don't forget Nando's. <laughs> For Nando's. Yeah, Nando's. Did you not know we did that? No, I heard this Beth story and last I, week. Beth and I go in there, and there, it's a That's really good. cool place, and I always got a DJ playing some real you know, hip hop type stuff. And, right. and they always go, do you want a, a table quietly down in the basement? I said, no, we want to sit at the bar. <laughs> Because 60-somethings really draw oh, the sure. crowd. Uh, Fernando's, which is really good in Broad Ripple. Okay. Uh, Upland Brewery. Good. Half Liter. Good. 317 Barbecue. Ooh, good. Sully's Grill. Yay. Uh, and Harder Brunch. Perfect. <laughs> what a cheering crowd, Terry. You all by yourself. I love them all. We unfortunately- love, This was going to be Lama Lama Lation. I know. Unfortunately, uh, I was uh, voted, uh, even though we are not an ESOP- Mm-hmm. And I am in charge. Uh, I was threatened with a walkout if I went with Lamalation. I don't understand it. It was such a great idea. I know. Lamalation. Oh, bunch of pouty a poor, kids. A poor man's zubilation. Yeah. We could only afford llamas. Perfect. But instead, and we, we do have uh, My Yellow Rickshaw. They put on such a great show. There, you want to you know, your the favorites. funny thing about llamas is they always poop in exactly the same place as a as a. As a pack, you know, as a herd. We didn't every, need to know that. Everybody goes to the same place. It's cool. We didn't it need to know that. It is kind of cool. I no. mean, if, if you had It's a called home idea. turf. It's called home turf. It's called yes, marking your turf. So, all right, what day is it, Pat? It is the 20th. It is on a, a Saturday night, I believe July 20th. And uh, this it's like a wedding because every time we have My Yellow Rickshaw, someone comes up to me. It's like, hey, can you play the pay the band to play another 30 minutes or an hour? It's like, yes, I will. <laughs> That's just how good they are. Hey, do we have uh, Abdul coming up? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we do? All right. Uh, We'll see you next week. (laughs) Abdul is next, 93 WIBC.